Good evening and welcome everyone to the Class 2A West Substate football game right here on Next Tech Game Time. Our Next Tech Game Time tonight pregame show is coming to you live from Plainville for the Substate semifinal game between the Plainville Cardinals and the Smith Center Redmen. I'm Curtis Brown. I'm here with Chris Lee. And tonight we're going to bring you a highly anticipated matchup between two hard-nosed MCL foes. And Chris, both Plainville and Smith Center have been on a collision course with one another ever since the week one the matchup yeah. between these two teams. Yeah, and that was a whale of a game. 20 to 16, uh, you know, Smith Center had some injuries late in the game. I mean, wow. And to get come back here again and do all this, this is good stuff. Um, so I'll start talking about Plainville offense a little bit. Uh, you know, all revolves around Hayton Friend. He's completed 121 passes for 1,812 yards and 28 TDs, only seven interceptions. He was the leading rusher until fairly recently. He's now the second leading rusher on the team with 1,042 yards and 16 TDs. Riley Knipe is now the leading, leading rusher with uh, 1,361 yards, and he has 20 TDs. This is like, you know, this is like Tecmo Super Bowl stuff here. <laughs> uh, at 6 foot 215, uh, he has a physicality of the Plainville attack that maybe they've lacked in past years. And, Chris, look, they've been running the ball a little bit more here in the playoffs. Yes, is that what and, you just found out? Yeah, yeah, that they've been running the ball more, and uh, it's a big part of their attack. His leading, you know, when Friend throws the ball uh, – Bresh has 39 receptions for 831 yards and 13 TDs. When he wants to throw the high ball, he likes to go to his tight end. Justin Reif, who has 44 receptions for quite a few yards, 543, but six TDs. This is a, a diverse, battle-tested offense that has only improved over the course of the season. What about Smith Center? Well, Smith Center, after starting 0-2 on the year, they, they've won nine straight ball games, and so they've kind of got healthy over over those uh, the 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 whole year mm -hmm. and so and coach Darren Sassy said you know his team after the tough start they never lost confidence and and so they always believed in themselves and they knew they'd get back here um, for this rematch against Plainville. Smith Center's uh, typical their run based offense out of the version of the wishbone you know they average 305 yards per game on the ground and only 74 in the air so I, I don't think that the cold weather tonight or the wind's really going to bother them a whole lot right. they're, they're going to stick to their, their game plan. And you know when, when, when people are wishbone you think of old uh, Nebraska OU and they ran a wide bone these guys run belly bone right. it's it's inside there's very right. few pitches even so right you're correct and it's a little different their their quarterbacks out of the shotgun he's not yep. under center as well so a little variation of that wishbone right uh, they, they score 37 points per game that's good for fifth in, in class 2a uh, they've rushed for a total of 3351 yards and 47 touchdowns they they got six players that have ran over 300 yards on the year they're led uh, by their junior Trace Hayes He's got 654 yards and 12 touchdowns. Uh, senior David Heilman is second on the team. He's got 615 yards and eight touchdowns. And their senior fullback, Chase Ryan, leads the team with carries, 115 carries, 552 yards, and six touchdowns. And, you know, another main thing about that, at the start of the season, you'd have never thought those guys were going to be their right. leading rushers. I yep. mean, it's amazing that they how that offense has evolved. Right, and they've got some guys back, um, but they uh, – Coach Sassy said, that "Don't look for them on offense. Look for them on defense." Right. And so they're going to keep the same guys that got them got them here. They're going to keep them on the field tonight. Well, I think the you know, Smith Center deserves a lot of credit for how they haven't let those injuries derail them. And and like you said, now they're just they're they're tromping down the right. field just as big as ever. So yeah, uh, Junior Colt Hutchison he took over for the injured senior Thane Benoit uh, midway through the first game between these two teams in Week One. He's thrown for 747 yards, nine touchdowns, and only five interceptions. But two of those came against these Plainville Cardinals. Um, he's, Hutchinson's also added 321 yards on the ground and five more touchdowns. When the Redmen do throw it, look for the, their junior wideout, Brett Myers, got 20 catches, 458 yards, and six touchdowns. And so really outside that first game against Plainville, they, they've kept, kept pretty good care of the ball, only eight turnovers throughout the whole year. Yeah, as I say, as I recall, when we had him in the, for the Phillipsburg game, they, they, they it wasn't turnovers that hurt them. Just right. that Phillipsburg team was a great team. What, what uh, what's Plainville looking like on defense tonight? Plainville, like I said, they become more they become a physical defense as well. Um, you know, they they uh, they're led, led by and this just blows me away. It's a freshman that's their <laughs> leading tackler, a middle linebacker Jared Casey. Uh, now he won't make the stops in the backfield. Usually when that happens, it's Wilkerson or it's Hayden Gillum who plays some linebackers, some D-line. They'll mix things up. Uh, Gillum has 81 stops. He has uh, over 11 first loss. Uh, Wilkerson and, and de defensive back Noah Hansen have in the upper 50s in tackles. Um, Wilkerson has eight and a half tackles for loss. So he'll get in the backfield, make some stops. And, and don't you think, Chris, that they played that hybrid with Gillum? Don't you think he'll be probably a down line? Yeah, he'll, he'll probably hand in the dirt tonight because yeah. if, 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 you know, you're not worried about – 
Smith Center will spread you out some. I mean, they'll do some things with formation, but it's, their intent is not to to spread you out in such a way that they're trying to isolate a single receiver or something right. crazy like that. Um, uh, Gillum and uh, Knipe lead the team in sacks. So, so Knipe, they will, they will blitz him from the linebacker spot. But like I said, may not be many passing attempts tonight. <laughs> they may not get and they may not be many throws tonight either, but they do throw Friend and Hanson have combined for 10 in, um, INTs. The Cardinals' defense has been really stout this year. They've had four shutouts. And if you take out a blowout win over Republic County, which they probably, you know, sub down quite a bit, the Cardinal defense only allowed more than 16 points once, and that was the Phillipsburg. Yeah. Phillipsburg scored on a lot of people this right. year. So on most nights, the Plainville offense will cover a 16-point opponent right. scoring set. So what yeah. about Smith Center on defense? Well, Smith Center is going to bring in the number one defense in Class 2A uh, scoring-wise. They, they only give up um, less than 10 points per contest and only gave up 20 points uh, three times this year. So uh, they run a 4-3 scheme. Uh, it's typical uh, MCL football, yeah. so to say, uh, speak. Um, they're led in tackles by junior safety Colt Hutchinson. He's got 90 tackles on the year. Uh, middle linebacker Avery Hawkins, a second. He's got 83 tackles. Uh, the big guy up front, uh, defensive end Dalton Kuhn, he's got 79 tackles. He's got 14 tackles for loss, and he's recovered four fumbles. Um, and I think that's the that's the uh, the difference in the defense here for Smith Centers that they create turnovers. Uh, they've created uh, 25 on the year. Uh, that's a big part of their defense. Um, they got a boost last week. Uh, senior linebacker Caden Meitler returned from injury. And look for him to kind of spy on Hayden Friend tonight because um, Friend can get out and make some make some plays on his own uh, on some of the scrambles. So look for uh, Meitler uh, to kind of spy on him tonight. Um, senior uh, sophomore cornerback Colby Benoit leads the team with three interceptions. He's also got seven forced fumbles on the year. So, um so like stripping the ball and doing doing those things like that right. are a big part of, of the Smith Center game. And the other thing I think, you know, when you, you talk about Smith Center having such a great scoring defense, some of it's complimentary football. The right. offense helps protect the defense right. by running the ball. And and uh, don't you think, uh, Chris, the defense for Plainville is kind of the difference between last year's team and, and this year and making oh, a certainly. deep run? Certainly. That, that you know, last year the, I think the thought was, well, Plainville is going to outscore a lot of people. Right. And they can still do that, but now their defense – if, if the offense sputters a little bit, the defense is going to keep them in the game. So. And then that's made them a, a state finalist a sure. contender for sure. What what do you see for Plainville to come away tonight with a win? What do you see the factors of that? Right. Well, I think, first of all, Hayden Gillum has a – or Hayden Friend, I mean, has a great uh, reputation for being a good decision maker. Uh, he, he knows when to scramble. He knows when to throw. He, uh, you know, he seems to get the offense set up well. You know, if that continues, that's going to be a factor. Um you know, the history might be a little bit on, on Smith Center side, though. You know, I uh, real quickly wrote down some stuff. Uh, Smith Center twelve and seven in sub-state games. They, right. they, you know, they they were they were were asking a state championship game in what two thousand eight or two thousand nine was their last loss. Right, and they they were here last year. They were in this game last year yeah. as well. Um, so so. Uh, you know, whereas uh, you know Plainville hasn't been to the state championship game since right. nineteen eighty five. The uh, the Power Index and the of Journal had uh, Plainville winning by three. Uh, you know, uh, it'll be interesting. You know, how much how much contribution does Smith Center get from Benoit? Right. From uh, Meitler. You know, those guys. That's going to be big. Uh, the Cardinals, as far as I know, are really healthy. Yeah. I mean, you know, they're, they're nicked up. Everybody's nicked up this time. Sure. Of year. Sure. But they're relatively healthy. Last time they played, Friend threw for 162 yards, had two t TD passes. He hit, hooked up with Beresh and Rife. Um, so, uh, Knipe had 80 yards rushing. So you, I expect them to be real balanced again. Right. Uh, keep doing the same things they've done. Well, what, what what's the case for Smith Center? I think it's pretty simple. They got to win the turnover battle. Mm -hmm. they, the two games they lost this, lost this year, those are the two, only two games they've lost the turnover battle. Uh, they they're able to keep for the most part. They keep good care of the ball, and they've been able to create a lot of turnovers this year. So I think that's the key for them is to win that turnover battle. Uh, slow this game down. Grind it out. Uh, keep the ball out of uh, Hayden Friend's hands. I yeah, think. That's uh, it. And the weather the weather could play a little bit of factor of that tonight right. too. Yeah, the weather may favor Smith Center just a little bit in that the handling the ball will be easier yeah. for them. But um, but you know, looking for a whale of a game. Chris. Yeah, I, I agree. It's going to be one heck of a game. So that's our next tech game time tonight pregame show. Coming up next will be the kickoff of tonight's contest. So stay tuned right here on Next Tech Game Time. Hi. We're looking for insurance. Oh, let's see who's free. 
When insurance agents work for only one company, their options are simply limited. But a trusted choice independent agent is free to shop many companies for a better deal. Free to do what's right for you. Let us shop for you. Contact Rogers and Associate to learn more. We are your Northwest Kansas premier roofing contractor. We've got you covered before and after the storm. Let us evaluate the condition of your roof and discuss options. We'll often be able to offer efficient, affordable alternatives. Call Roofmasters for a free estimate today. Roofmasters, that's who you're looking for. When it comes to accessorizing your truck, SUV, or van, Advantage Glass Plus is the original specialist. They have a huge selection including Nerf bars, custom chrome wheels, ARE truck caps and tonneau covers, running boards, heavy duty grill guards, fender flares, plus a whole lot more. Along with retracts, the ultimate tractable pickup bed cover. Enhance appearance, add protection, plus add style and value to your ride. When you visit Advantage Glass Plus, South Pine Street in Hayes, proudly serving the area for 20 years. From senior trips to toddler adventures and youth sports, the Hayes Recreation Commission is your one-stop shop for fun. Check out all the fall and winter brochure for a complete list of scheduled events and classes. The fun times continue in the HRC Wellness Center where you can enroll in personal training and memberships. The HRC provides fun and fitness for all ages. Find them at hayesrec.org, call or stop by and learn more. At Bullseye Event Center, we consider every detail when transforming our space into the perfect setting for your event. Our newly renovated, unique facility is ideal for weddings and receptions, corporate events, and parties for up to 300 guests. We also have smaller rooms and on-site kitchen available for meetings and reunions and social gatherings. Call us today to book your next function at Bullseye Event Center, downtown Norton, where your event is our top priority. When it comes to commercial and residential concrete construction in the Hayes area, J Corp is a preferred choice. They can handle your project from ground up, including excavation, site prep, to finished concrete and pavement, driveways, curbs, streets, parking lots. No job is too big or too small. They also sell and deliver sand, rock, and asphalt millings. Call for a free estimate today. The rock solid choice in concrete construction. J Corp, 1707 East 10th Street in Hayes. Leon's Welding and Fabrication has been serving Western Kansas for over 25 years with custom fabrication of metal projects, including trailers, flatbeds, steel and aluminum fencing, ornamental gates and handrails, and metal art creations. Leon's also offers sandblasting and coating services and a powder coating division with over 6,400 colors to choose from. For your next project, visit Leon's Welding and Fabrication, East Highway 40 in Hayes. Welcome back to Plainville and Next Tech Game Time's coverage of the Class 2A sub-state contest between the Plainville Cardinals and the Smith Center Redmen. And Chris, why don't you tell the folks about a, a, a cool contest we've got going on tonight. Hey, Next Tech Game Time is partnered with Under His Wings of Plainville for a Snapchat giveaway. Snap your game time photos to nex T E C H with the Game Time Geofilter for a chance to win a great, fun football prize package where it'll be notified via snapchat in the fourth quarter and we've already got some in so get get your winners in looking out on the field we've got the uh, coin toss going on right now officials going over ground rules things like that um boy you know we thought we were all done this year and uh uh, call us up. Let's get it. We got another game queued up. We got some different sponsors tonight. This is an exciting. Yeah, and a good game. Good crowd out of here for. Uh, I know the the people here in Plainville have been uh, been circling the stadium since about ten o'clock this morning, yeah. and so they're ready to go. They haven't they haven't had a state uh, semifinal ma uh, game in, for some time here, so they're excited. It looks like Smith Center's got a pretty good crowd across the way, so. Um, we expect a pretty good game tonight, Chris. Right. Two teams coming in on big, long win streaks. Smith Center's won nine straight. I believe Plainville's won eight straight. 
Uh, both of them lost to Phillipsburg, obviously. So uh, the coin toss is completed. Uh, looks like that Plainville won the toss. They deferred. So Smith Center will receive and defend the south end. So that we're about ready to cue this sucker up. Yeah, and Smith Center uh, returning to the sub-state contest uh, again for the second year. They lost last year or last year to Plain or to Phillipsburg, excuse me. Uh, Plainville making their way back into the semifinal uh, game, um, the first game, first uh, sub-state game for them since 2011. Yeah, and we, as I say, it looks like we had some wind coming in. It looks like pretty good out of the north. I think the expectation is is that the wind will die down over the course of the evening, but it is out of the north, yeah. so Plainville will have its uh, the wind to its back when it kicks. I tell you, we were if you saw we're watching earlier, uh, Curtis and I were down the field doing pregame, and we didn't have any of our coats and gloves on when we did that. It is cold here, folks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a lot of admiration for these kids. You know, we were talking about, I wonder how many kids are going to come out in sleeves and how many aren't. Um, yeah. Some aren't, some aren't, and you really can't second guess either way on that. So Hayden Friend is teeing the ball up for the Cardinals. He averages 47 yards per kickoff. Back deep for the Redmen would be uh, number 34, David Heilman. And this is a short kickoff, going to bounce, and Heilman's going to take it at the 20, going to reverse field. He's going to keep it off to the right side, slips a tackle, but is taken down at the 16, 17-yard line. So nothing going there on the reverse. Actually lost a couple yards. Yeah, Chris. And, and, and Smith Center likes to do that. Um, yep. uh, you know, and what the thing is is they're trying to spread you out. Uh, you know, they don't always go back to the wall side. Look like you try and take it back to the wall side there. Yep. They'll set up a wall. Sometimes they'll run naked because teams will crash the wall really hard. If you can get a one-on-one -on -one out here, you like your chances there. Smith Center ball, first and ten at their own 18. And Colt, Colton Hutchinson, the junior quarterback, getting ready to take the snap in the wishbone set for the Redmond. And it's a give off the right-hand side, and that is to Trace Haven. He gets up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Uh, three, four yard, three yards on the first, first down carry for the Redmond. And, and that was just straight power there. They, they blocked everybody up on that. But you're going to see a lot of variations of, of this wishbone. Some will be a, you know, a couple of different dive series. will be a dive ISO series. They'll do a lot of things. But expect to see a lot of running the ball. And in weather like this, that's a great yep. recipe. Yep. They got one, uh, one receiver split to the right. That's Brett Meyer. And Hutchison takes a snap. And this is a give to Heilman off the left-hand side. He's got some room up across the 25 and up to the 30-yard line. That'll be enough for a first down for Smith Center. So the Redmen, two runs and a first down. That's that's how they like to yeah, get going on offense. Yeah, that's their recipe right there. You see uh, number six kicking out the end there. That's Haven. And like I said, they all block for each other really well. Obviously, there's no egos or anything like that involved here with Smith Center. The ball at the 30-yard line. Heilman and Haven, the running backs. Fullback is Chase Ryan. They're set behind the quarterback, Junior Colton Hutchinson. Split to the right is Meyer. And this is to give to the fullback, Ryan, and he's got just a couple yards. That uh, defensive front for the Cardinals uh, limited his carry or limited the yards there on first down. Yeah, and that and that's like a dive series there. Some of the other two uh, runs were more ice or ISOs where the right. other the other back was leading up. And what they did by having that dive series, if you're sitting back waiting for the ISO, that dive hits you hard and quick. Right, and that's, that dives to keep everybody honest on defense. So second down and seven for the Redmen at the 34-yard line, 33-yard line. And a give to Heilman off the left-hand side. And nothing going there. And the Cardinal defense stands him up right at the 34, maybe a yard on the carry. But that was good, good pursuit there by the Cardinals. Yeah, they rallied hard to the ball there. And like I said, that's just true uh, power on power block. They're trying to get everybody up front yeah. to get a block there. Gain, I'm going to give him a gain about two there. I'll bring up yeah. a third and six. And ordinarily for a running team, you'd say, well, third and six, that's not a good down and distance. Well, Smith Center, well, it's really maybe more. Yeah, good. it's probably, yeah. I think you're right, about six, maybe right. a, maybe, a, maybe seven. But. Right. But, but they're, and they are spreading the field now, but they're not afraid to run the ball even in third and six. So, so Wishbone set behind Hutchinson. And there's a whistle. And we've got maybe a timeout. Timeout, timeout by Smith Center. So they want to talk this over um, before this this. Pretty crucial third down early on in this first quarter. 
Hey, the thrill of a touchdown, the excitement of a successful pass, all combined to remind us that state football championship games are only moments away. Sponsored by the Kansas State High School Activities Association, state championship playoffs began November 1st and will conclude with the final games on November 26th. Attend the games, support your team, and join the crowd during the final weeks of Kansas High School football. For more information, call the Kansas State High School Activities Association at 785-273-5329. Yeah, to do tonight's game, we had to get special permission to do this from the Kansas High School Activities Association. We appreciate that opportunity, too. It looks like we've got our first batch of Snapchats coming up on the screen here. Looks like that's Plainville warming up. Yep, pregame warm up there. That's Plainville. That's Smith Center on the other end warming up. So Got third down and the six. Kids in the stands. Third down and six for the Redmen. 9.30 left in this first quarter. And this is a give to Haven off the right-hand side, and he stopped there. Nothing going, and they push him back to the 30, but forward momentum will be at the 34. It looks like maybe he lost a yard, Chris. Just yeah. nothing going. The 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 left-hand side of that Cardinal defense uh, shut him down. Right, and, 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 you know, this is complimentary football for Smith Center. They want their offense to also protect their defense, which you said had the top-scoring defense. Here's a replay of the play before there, but uh, they want to protect their their defense a little bit, but the problem yep. is the three and out here, that puts the powerful Plainville offense on the field. And Ryan Bresh back deep for the they about got that. There was no, some contact, but no, no flag. flag. No flag on the play, and that'll – Baresh lets that ball hit and, and die down at the 38-yard line. So, Plainville will start their first offensive possession um, in pretty good territory. 8.45 left here. That's, so, this will be their first possession. But you're right, that is good field position. And like you said, got some uh, breeze at their pack. So, if Hayden Friend and the, the wants to air it out to uh, Hanson or uh, to uh, Baresh or uh, – any of their, that wide receiver core, Copeland, they, they, that's an option. So trips right for the Cardinals. Hayden Friend, the senior quarterback, set to take the snap. There's some motion across. And this is a give to Nipe up the middle. And Riley Nipe is up to the 40-yard line. So two yards on first down for the Cardinals. Riley Nipe's a, a, a big back there, Chris. He's 6-foot, yeah. 215-pound senior and really – Really, they've been leaning on him here in the playoffs. Yes, they have. And, and like I said, they even throw the ball to him more. I the, I remember we did a game earlier this year, and he hadn't caught hard any passes. Now he, he's in double digits. So uh, you think about that, him getting a little swing pass yeah. out in the flats, that's going to be tough for a D-back to bring him down. So trips right for the Cardinals. One set back, or one receiver to the left. Now they're motion across the line of scrimmage. And twins on each side, and this is Hayden Friend with the keeper. He's got some room off the left-hand side. Hayden Friend's in the, into the end. He is in the open spaces and in for the score. Hayden Friend, um, we talked about this yeah. earlier. You've got to watch out for this kid. He is explosive behind center. Yeah, end. it looked like uh, this little zone read. He had it in Nipes uh, in, his, in his stomach there and, and pulled it out. He obviously saw something on the left side he liked. He pulled it out and just streaks up the left sideline for a touchdown. Yeah, That's going to be a 60-yard run. And that formation really really spreads that defense out. Yes. Um, and, and the Redmen have to commit their linebackers to some of those wide receivers. And uh, the kick here for Copeland is up and good. And Plainville takes an early lead, 7-0, seven 7.56 left in this first quarter. But we got a, we got a replay here coming up. We're going to see that touchdown run again, Curtis. And like you said, boy, look at that. That's parted nicely. And, and, and you give an athlete like Friend that kind of room, He's going to make good things yep. happen for you. Good blocking off the left-hand side. That's left tackle. That's a freshman, 5'11", 182 pounds. Jared Casey, also left guard. Willie Wilkerson really, really opened that up for a friend that I don't think he was touched. Oh, I, yeah. That's what I say. That was, like I said, it, a great read by him not to give. And then, like I said, they parted that really well. And he also obviously got some nice blocks from, you know, maybe a wide receiver or somebody because even the D-backs yeah. weren't close. Yeah, the uh, tight end, Justin Reif, was also motioned on that side of the of the uh, formation. But So an early touchdown run by Hayden Friend puts the Cardinals on top. Uh, Hayden Friend getting set to 
tee this ball up. We'll be kicking it off. He, like I said earlier, averages 47 yards per kickoff. Back deep for the uh, Redmen will be David Heilman. He averages nine yards per return. And Colton Hutchison averaging 12 yards per return. And they're not, they're not, they're not too deep. They're at the 15-yard line, 10-yard line. Yeah, like I said, he kind of pooched it just a little bit last time. This kick is a little deeper, taken by Heilman at the 15. Heilman now up the middle of the field. Heilman's got some room. And Heilman up across the 35 to the 36-yard line. So good good field position here for Smith Center to start their well, second offensive possession. And that wasn't any wall return. That looks like a straight uh, up the middle return, uh, maybe a wedge type return there. Uh, you know, and then when your teams get used to seeing that reverse action, and you can blow it right back into their snout like that, you're, yep. you're going to get good yardage like that. So Smith Center, first and 10 at the 37-yard line in their wishbone formation. Hutchison with the ball, give to the uh, fullback, Ryan up the middle, and he's got some more yards. So he bounces off to the right side, and he's got nine yards on first down. What a tough run there. Well, as you watch that, you see the linemen keep their feet active there. I mean, they didn't. See, watch the feet there. Feet yep. moving, feet moving, feet moving. Keeps going. Uh, that, you know, that also, and like I said, tough running also there by Ryan. So second down and one now for the Redmen. Again, in their wishbone set, Chase Ryan, the fullback, Heilman, and Haven, the running backs. And a give it to the second man through. This is Heilman, but he is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. May have gave him a yard. And that looks like that was uh, 52, Jared Casey. Yeah, they're moving the stick, so he must have got the, the yard on that. So Casey there on the tackle. But like you said, Kurt, they did a nice job jamming that up. But when, when, when the uh, Smith Center could be on second and one, you're in deep trouble. We won't be giving you many other scores tonight. There are other 11-man uh, play playoff games tonight, but uh, we'll probably just keep focused on this one. And this is the fullback, Ryan, again up the middle, and not much going for him on first down. He does fall forward to the 50-yard line. So it'll be second down and nine, it looks like. The spot a little bit short at the 49. Yeah, it's interesting how good running teams – even when they get stacked up like he did on that play, that the, they tend to fall forward or find some way to nudge ahead to get that extra yard. That didn't look like much, but uh, the yep. Plainville defense did a nice job stacking that up. So second and nine for the Redmen. Hutcherson with the snap, and it's again to the second man through. This is Heilman off to the right side, and nothing there for the Redmen. That was uh, 58, Willie Wilkerson, the defensive tackle on the left-hand side with the stop, and... We'll give him two yards, but that's about it, Chris. It's it's pretty tough sledding up the yeah. middle. Yes, it really is. And other than Brian bouncing that one right early, they 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 they've not had much success either direction. But they've made right. less right than left. So again, third and seven now for the Redmen at the 50-yard line, maybe 49, we'll call it. And Hutchison set to receive this snap. Wishbone set behind him. And this is a gift to Haven off the left-hand side, and he's tackled there. That's number 50, 55, Hayden Gillum on the tackle. Just a couple yards. Now going to bring up fourth down and four. Gillum did a nice job slamming that yeah. shut. It, and watching that play develop, it looked like they did, had a nice crease for him there. And, and then he did, and Gillum just dropped the hammer there. And they made that may have set up a, a, a counter later on in this ball game. Yeah. But looks like back to punt. This will be Logan Zabel. Logan averages 32 yards per punt. And this is a straight line kick. Baresh with the fair catch at the 15. So that's an effective a little, kick. Though. Yeah, play a little field position game. And Smith Center moves them back. Uh, the Cardinals will have their second offensive possession with uh, 4.54 left in this first quarter. Yeah, the, that's the kind of thing. If he hammers the ball away, it rolls in the end zone. It's going to come all the way back out to 20. You get to the 15, a little bit better field position uh, for the uh, Smith Center Redmond, who obviously play a lot of field position football. Yeah. We'll see what kind of uh, adjustments are made on the on defense here. Uh, Cardinals, though, come out trips left. Friend in the backfield is going to give this to Knife. He's going to keep this, pull it out. He's got some room off the right-hand side up across the 20 to the 23. 
And again, that's just a zone read back there. And he reads that defensive end. As soon as he saw that defensive end, watch 50, uh, 59 out there. As soon as he yep. comes down, he uh, 50, yeah, 59. As soon as he comes down, 55, I'm sorry. That's Ashton that's, uh, Hawkins. Hawkins, yeah. As soon as he came down, he pulled it. That's exactly who he's reading, though. That takes a lot of patience there, too. Oh, hey, he yeah. Had that, he had that stuck in Knight's uh, hands for a while. And, and that takes a lot of coordination, too, between he and Knight, because if yep. Knight grabs that more too aggressively, that's not going to work, Nor or is it if he's not assertive as well. Friend looking for a throw, and he escapes off to the right-hand side and may got a yard or two. Looks like this is up to the 25-yard line. So he'll be a yard short. Brings up third down and one, almost inches here. Yeah. Uh, looked like there was looking for a throw, just nothing open there for Friend. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Hayden Friend generally makes really good decisions on that. Yeah. Uh, when, when to pull it down because if, if you pull it down too much, you're not going to respect your passing game, and, and they've got a pretty good one. So trips left for friend on third down and one, and this is a give to Knipe up the middle, and he's got some room. Knipe up across the 30-yard line to the 31, and that'll be enough for a first down. Yeah, it looked like they pulled somebody from the left side of the formation to lead up in there for him, but uh, there's a lot of power there as well. I'm going to give him a gain of six on that. Gets him up the 31-yard line, be first and 10 with 4.06 left here in the first quarter. So far, the uh, Plainville Cardinals have had no trouble moving the ball. Yeah, it is coming. They're running the ball, and it's coming out of this, this spread formation. So two wide receivers both directions for Friend. Now some motion. Barash coming in the backfield. And as a give to Knipe up the middle. Knipe's got some room up to the 40. Knipe across the midfield to the 50. Down to the 40, down to the 39. Good tough run there by Riley Knipe. Boy, they, and he's, he's, he may be hurt now. He's, yeah, this would be a big, a big loss. I, I tell you what, they, they put some – here's the replay. Watch this window dressing here. You see Buresh go in motion. I'm sure they've run option off that motion before. And so, you know, maybe that pulls the safety out. I, you would think Smith Center wouldn't let a linebacker flow with that. But let's go to break here. You're watching Next Tech Game Time. It's up to the Prairie Heritage Auction and Real Estate, New York Life Agent Justin Casey, and Rimpy Plumbing Heating and Air – are proud of the hard work and dedication of the 2016 Plainville Cardinal football team. They wish them the best of luck in postseason play. Go get them, Cardinals, from Stahl Products, LLC, the Animal Hospital, Bosselman Energy, supporting the Plainville football team all season long. When you want variety, you usually need to visit several places for bold flavors. Where they stuff your pretzel with three cheeses and roast beef. Or where smoked cheddar meets crispy bacon. Because when you want to try seven new sandwiches with a range of unique flavors unlike anywhere else, there's only one place to go. It's the only place you'll find sandwiches like the Caprese and the Tuscan. And that place is Schlotzky's. Family Health Mart, the People's State Bank, member FDIC, Fouts Insurance Agency, and Collier Abstract and Title are proud supporters of the Smith Center Redmond football team. These student athletes have shown tremendous hard work and dedication. Let's go, Redmond, from Gene's Heartland Foods, Midway Chiropractic, Smith County Bank, member FDIC, Howland Mobile Veterinary Service, and U.S. Center Motel and Apartments. We're behind you all the way. We're back here at Plainville where Riley Knipe, it appeared, might have twisted his ankle at the end of that 31-yard run. They helped him off the field, but he's not moving very well. So this, this could be a serious situation for the Cardinals. First and 10 at the Smith Center, 38. Looks like coming in, checking in for the Cardinals is number one, Jordan Fennessy, the 5'11", 155-pound freshman, checking in at running back. Trips to the left for friend, one receiver to the right. Now they motion across the formation. And this is a fumble, almost a fumble, and there's Finnessy's hit in the backfield. That is number 29. Chase Ryan, his defensive tackle position, came up and, and hit Finnessy in the backfield. That's a loss of five on first down. And and that's just the, the you talked about that just the familiarness with the zone read. Um, there's a, a yeah. good indication, Chris, that maybe they had, these two haven't had as many reps. 
Yeah, exactly. Um, and 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 I, Finnessy, I know he's quarterbacked a little. He's yep. done some different things for him. So yeah, probably just not a lot of work together on that part of it. So Hayden Friend now uh, second and fifteen, and is going to roll to the left. And this is a straight quarterback sweep. Friend off the left hand side, up across to the thirty five to the thirty four. So that was a good run there by Friend. Boy, when he gets to the outside, he's got some speed, Chris. Yeah, and, and it's, you see, uh, Finnessy gets enough of a block to get him to the corner, and there you see down blocking downfield, that's number seven, that's a Baresh. You know, that's part of the Plainville success story is those wide receivers are pretty unselfish about getting downfield and getting some blocks. That ball gets it up to the 34. So this makes uh, a little more doable on third down, third down and six at the 34 for the Cardinals. Twins receivers both directions for Hayden Friend out of the shotgun. Lone set back behind him is Jordan Fennessy, the freshman coming in, playing running back. And this is a looks like a throw, and it falls incomplete, but there's a flag down, and it looked like maybe the uh, free safety Colton Hutchison may have got there a little early, Chris. It looks yeah. like it's going to be past It was a bang-bang play, but, yeah, it looked like it might have been just a little bit early. So that will give the Cardinals first down here. And their drive uh, continues. Second yeah. second drive of the, the ball game, and Plainville's uh, having pretty good success offensively. Yeah, and this that's the high school rule for pass interference there. We watch a lot of NFL. We think in terms of it being a spot foul, and in high school it's not. So, so first and 10 for the Cardinals uh, just uh, inside the 20-yard line, probably at the 19 it looks like. Plainville comes out, trips to the right, one receiver to the left. That would be Dylan Wallace, now Rife in motion. And this is a throw out to Baresh. Baresh has got some room off the right-hand side, and he's down to the six-yard line. More penalty flags, and yeah. Baresh lost his helmet, but that yeah, I think may have been a result good, yeah. of a face I think mask. it gives a pretty good hint of what the penalty might be. So. Yeah. A nice little flanker screen out here. Get, gets a nice block there by his uh, Hanson out there, I believe. And, yeah, that definitely looks like a, pa uh, a face mask. So this will be halfway or half the distance to the goal. We'll set up first and goal for the Plainville Cardinals. That's yeah, going to be about a three-yard penalty there, a four-yard penalty, because it can only be half the distance. And, and yeah, it obviously wasn't on by by design to do that. But uh, we are first and goal. So Wallace split to the right. Uh, friend trips to the left of him. Tennessee in the backfield. First and goal at the four-yard line for the Cardinals. And this is a keeper by Friend. And... Reaches the ball out, but is going to be short. Going to mark him about at the yard and a half. Yeah, it looks like more of an inside zone read there. He sticks it in Finnessy's gut, but really just more of a fake. Yeah, he, he was, I think his intentions yeah. were to, to run that football. Yeah, I'm beginning. not sure what the play call was. It might have been a zone <laughs> read play call, but he said, I'm going to take this sucker to the house myself. Didn't quite get there. He gets the ball up to the one, so let's give him a gain of three on that. Second goal at the one. And this may, this may be where they miss – Nipe the big, oh, the big yeah. running back, but uh, friend is not. Uh, he's not. He's shown he's not scared to stick his nose in the middle of this. So second and one for the Cardinals. Rife in motion, and friend off to the right hand sides into the end zone for his second touchdown of the evening. Hayden Friend on the one yard quarterback sweep, and Chris Boy the Cardinals are on the board now twice both. Yeah, they're they're two for two tonight on offensive possessions. And I thought I saw Knipe down here moving around, so uh, he may be coming back at some point too. So that's uh, de uh, that's tough for Smith Center on both both ends. And Copeland's kick is up and good, and so Tanner Copeland has the extra point. And our score here, 141 left in this first quarter. Plainville 14, Smith Center 0. Yeah, this is a uh, – right now, if you're Smith Center, you got to find a way to get a stop here. That was an 85-yard drive. Here comes our replay of this last scoring drive. I'd say it's going to be a quarterback sweep right. Rife gets a hook block there. and gets a, He gets another piece of somebody else. Yeah. Fennessey also gets a block up there as well. Yeah, and that's uh, – 
part of some of the success friends had out on the on the edges is because of the blocking of his receivers uh, and tied in. You know, Rife and Hanson, Wallace, Baresh, and Copeland, all of them are, are pretty pretty good blockers. So uh, multi-dimensional wide receiver is just not, not there to catch the ball. Yes, and obviously the Plainville line is doing a fine job too. Friends been relatively clean the whole night. So uh, that's 10 plays, 85 yards. Also, it's helped by that 15-yard pass interference penalty. Yeah, that, that was a big – yeah, that was a third down. Third and six play, yeah. So that 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 was a factor as well, and it was a bang-bang play, but uh, pro- I'm no doubt the right call. So Hayden Friend set to tee this one off. Back deep again for the Redmen is, is Heilman and Hutchinson. They're standing about at the 15-yard line. And this is going to Heilman at the 16. Heilman takes the ball up the middle, and he's hit right there. That is number 59 for the Cardinals. Jared Rathburn on the on the tackle on the special teams play. So good coverage there by the Cardinals and Chris uh, Smith Center's got to get something going offensively. Boy, they, yeah. they just haven't had had anything uh, positive. Yeah, and and you know both of these teams, a lot of those kids are playing both ways. It's not a platoon situation, but just from a momentum standpoint, you know you 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 need to give your defense a mental rest and kind of get it back together so this is a give to the second man through Heilman and he's met in the backfield and he may have got back to the line of scrimmage so again nothing going for the Redmen 52 on the tackle Jared Casey yeah stopped up nicely there a minute 17 left here in the first quarter before we switch ends but for, for Smith Center I don't think it's a function of like I said that win you can still see the flags Moving pretty good from the north, but I don't think that's really limiting their play calling. This is just who they are. They're going to run the ball a lot. So Wishbone set for the Redmen behind Hutchinson. And this is a give to Haven, and there's just still nothing going on off that left side. Willie Wilkerson there underneath the whole pile for the Cardinals. And and Wilkerson, you know, he has quite a few tackles, especially for a defensive line. He has quite a few uh does a nice job stacking that play up, and they, like I said, what this, what they did is, and you, the Smith center line weren't able to run the feet yeah. of their feet there. You know, they were stood up. That was Staples on the carry. Third and nine now for the Redmen, and this is a, a quarterback keeper on Hutchinson off the left hand side, and stiff arms the guy up to the 35 yard line, but he's going to come up four yards short, bring up fourth down and four. Yeah, he does a nice job here initially getting the corner, but they, they feel inside out. There's a nice stiff arm there to add some yardage. Uh, a nice run by Hutchinson, but when you're down third and ten, that makes it tough. Yeah, Noah Harrison hung on there. He might have squip, uh, was able oh, to slip through. But. Timeout Plainville, I think. Was that what it was? Or is there somebody down over here? No, it's a, it looks like there's a timeout on the – I think the officials are sorting through. But, yeah, it looks like. Oh, well, we're set, resetting the clock. That's what we're doing. Okay. So this will be fourth down, but it'll. Fourth and a. It was on the field. It should The clock should be running, I would guess. Well, we're, we're resetting the clock, and then, then they'll I still imagine if they reset, then they'll run it and Smith Center may just let it run out. Yeah. That's gonna be fourth and uh fourth and four. Four, okay. So now I got the clock figured out and now are they gonna down. they're they're not gonna wind it. Okay. I thought it was tackled in, in Well the I play. thought so too. That's why I thought they'd wind it, but that's okay. So back to punt is Logan Zabel. Back deep for the Cardinals is Baresh. And a good punt by Zabel is going to take a roll here for the the Redmen. And will be downed at the 32-yard line. That's where Plainville will start the, uh, their third offensive possession here. 3.8 seconds left in this first quarter. But, boy, everything's went Plainville's way so far, Chris. Yes, it sure has. I thought there might... I never saw a beanbag fly, so there must not must not have hit any of the coverage team, because uh, what will happen if it would hit one of the coverage team guys, a beanbag comes in, 
Yeah. And Smith Center, and if, and if that's what happens, you can either take the ball where the beanbag hit or you can pick up the ball and run without risk because you can always take it where the beanbag's at. That's why as a special team coach, you're going to yell and holler whenever you see that <laughs> beanbag fly. So first and ten for the Cardinals. Trips right for Hayden Friend in the shotgun. Looks like Riley Knipe is back in. And Barash, this is a double pass. Oh, double pass. Barash looking deep, and it's broken up by Hutchinson. Colton Hutchinson thought he had an interception, but uh, incomplete. Looking for Copeland out there, but uh, we've I think we've seen that before, uh, yeah. <laughs> Chris, this this year. So the well, ball just kind of hung on him. Yeah, yeah. I say give give Hutchinson credit for uh, sniffing that out, and not falling for it, because uh, it when when Plainville makes all that yardage like they do, you, you as a D back, you're going to get nosy and try to get up in there. Yep. Let's take it to a break. Uh, it's 14 to zero Plainville. You're watching Next Tech Game Time. Norton wow. County Hospital would like to welcome Dr. Greg Serene to the community. Dr. Serene is a board certified surgeon and trained in sports medicine. His practice will focus on knee injuries, joint replacements, and general orthopedics. Dr. Serene has been practicing for over 20 years and looks forward to providing orthopedic care to Norton and the surrounding communities. The Norton County Hospital, dedicated to caring, commitment, and community. of the Class 2A West Substate Contest between the Plainville Cardinals and the Smith Center Redmond. We start the uh, second quarter, be second down and 10 for the Cardinals. Yeah, we were just uh, being uh, serenaded by our producer, Jason Pierce, to tell us how warm he is down in the truck right now. <laughs> poor our poor cameraman, uh, Ivan, out here. I'm sure he's not feeling that way. So. <laughs> well, November decided to uh, to 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 come finally after after we've had a pretty good weather throughout the whole year, so we'll take that. So first, second down and ten for the Cardinals. Baresh in motion. This is a pitch to Baresh, a little behind him, but he's got some room off the left hand side. Flag comes down. Ryan Baresh gets to the 36 yard line, and it'll be holding on the Cardinals. So let's bring back. Bring the ball back. But that we've seen that uh, early in that first quarter, Chris, that was uh, that was the motion. Then that was the option play off that motion. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, both teams are doing this. You're setting up other plays with the plays you run. And if they aggressively jump what you're running, they'll run the uh, complimentary play to that to, to even that up. So that will move it back to the 29-yard line. Good to see Riley Knight back in the ball game for the Cardinals. The six foot, two hundred fifteen pound senior running back looks like he twisted his ankle, but he's back in the ball game. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. That that'll make a big difference in the outcome of this game. So trips right for Hayden Friend, Riley Knife, the lone setback, and this is just a, a quarterback sweep off to the right hand side. Smith Center was able to get there and cover that. That's number forty five, Avery Hawkins, the middle linebacker, read that all the way, and that's a loss of. Four on yeah, the play. Yeah, it's going to be a, a substantial loss, too. Uh, like I said, Hawkins does a nice job getting – well, he's filling inside out, but the corner does a nice job of, of, of sniffing that out and turning it back upfield. That will be a loss of four. That will bring up a third and 20, third and 21. So, uh, we this is we haven't seen this kind of down and distance situation for the Cardinals so far. And they're going to take a timeout, it looks like, to discuss what, what they're going to do. Uh, that's uh, – in these types of situations, you got to worry about friends scrambling. Yeah, oh. if you're Smith Center, because that's we've seen that before, and he's got the ability to to scramble out of you know people down the deep defensive backs down covering receivers. And, you know, somebody watching the game, you know, the situation. Why wouldn't you just blitz the crap out of him here? Well, the thing is, with uh, an athlete like Hayden Friend, if you blitz him hard, if he can just find the seam. Then he only has five guys to beat in the secondary, let's say, if you blitz six. So, um, you you know, I, I, would, I would almost expect Smith Center to play soft and make sure, like so you talked about in the pregame, maybe somebody spying on him. You know, this might be a situation we'd really want somebody to spy on him. It's just in a yeah. soft coverage just to, to, want, to eye him. Some of our sponsors for tonight's game, I'd say we've got a whole different fleet of sponsors on tonight. 
Some of our sponsors tonight, tonight include the Plainville Livestock Commission, First State Bank of Plainville, Rife Welding and Construction, Plainville Shortstop, Midwest Community Bank, Family Health Mart, People's Bank, member FDIC, and Fouts Insurance. So third and 21 now for the Cardinals. Twins receivers both directions for friend. The lone setback is Riley Knipe. 11 minutes to go here in the first half. Rife in motion. Friend going to roll back throw across the middle to Rife. And Rife is hit hard there by the strong safety thing, Benoit. And that's a good good gain on the play, but that will bring up fourth down. Yeah, this is fourth and four, but good play call yeah. for the Cardinals. Now watch this back. hit coming up. Bam. Yeah. That's, a good, that's a good hit. Yeah, but like That said, may sting a little bit tonight, but it looks like the Cardinals are, are – I thought for a minute they're going to bring their offense back out, but it'll be friend in punt formation. We, we were talking. We didn't know if Benoit will play much on offense. He was the quarterback at the start of the season. So, obviously, the kid's a good athlete. That's nice to have the luxury of playing just on defense. Coming back from an injury. Friend with an angled punt, and it'll go out of bounds. Looks like at the 22-yard line, 21-yard line. So, Good punt by Hayden Friend. Boy, he just does does everything for yeah. these Cardinals. He just does a little bit of everything. Yeah, you, you look at some of the stats. Uh, he'd been involved on special teams returning a lot, too. So, Here, let's check out some of the snaps we have coming in. Okay, a couple fans up in the audience. I, I missed who the filter was. Hey, oh, there's, there's somebody watching at home on the – oh, doing a dab, a dab <laughs> there, too. So. Uh, couple more fans up in the stadium. That's a live shot of action there. Bob View, that's the big boom that has the flag up on it. You couldn't really see that. That's the pregame there. They're getting ready to bust through the banner. So. Chase Ryan off the left-hand side, and Chase lowers his head across the 35-yard line. And that was a little different, Chris. They, uh, the, the Redmond came out, twins receivers both directions, just yeah. one back. And so they're showing a little bit of different formations this time around. Really, they haven't. Have, have struggled moving the ball, and that may only be their second first down of the night. Yeah, they uh, you don't see Smith Center spread the field quite that much. But here they go again, four receivers split both both directions. Hutchinson going to take this snap, only Ryan, the, the lone back, and they're going to give to Ryan. And I'm sorry, this is Haven, but Haven's brought down by an ankle tackle by Hayden Gillum. Boy, if he doesn't tackle him there by the ankle, he, uh, Haven may have some room to run. Yes. So second down and eight. Like the for the Redmen, this will be twins. And this is a fake by Hutchison. Hutchison takes to the left hand side. There's a flag down. Hutchison across. The, to midfield, a good run by Hutchison, but this may be coming back. You know, the, this drive started off with a nice run by Chase Ryan, and that was another good run, their second long run. I like that fake there. Yeah. Yeah, that was their second long run of this drive coming out of this formation. The first one was Chase Ryan on a 15-yard run, but this one's coming back. Yeah, got a holding call there. Brings it back to the 27-yard line. So that becomes a holding spot foul. So that's why you end up with funny uh, funny numbers sometime on that. But that will make it second and 18. And, again, Smith Center coming out. Four wide receivers set. One, uh, one running back behind Hutchison. Hutchison again with a fake. And he's off the left-hand side. Hutchison's got some room. And... Steps out of bounds at the 37-yard line, 38-yard line. So, again, they went right back to the fake uh, pass and quarterback keeper. Yeah, and what's fascinating about that is you don't really, you know, Smith Center to throw the ball a lot, so you wouldn't think a fake would be real effective. Right. I just think it's just a natural reaction when you see the yep. quarterback jump up like that to fall back. So, Twins receivers to the left. One receiver to the right, and Hutchinson's going to keep up the middle, but he is stopped there by the Cardinal defense. Nothing going for Hutchinson. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't even know if 
That looks like that's Gillum again on the tackle. So fourth down and eight now for the Redmen. Yeah, and you you, you still got to punt here, but it, it's going to get to where you're going to have to rethink these things and not go a traditional matter. 14-0, eight minutes left here in the second quarter. Redmond at least got a first down on that drive. And some oh, pressure. Yeah. This is blocked. This is blocked by Plainville, and they're going to recover the ball at the 30-yard line. That was Jared Casey, yeah. looks like, on the block for the Cardinals. And now they're set up in good field position at the 30-yard line. Here comes the replay. We'll get another shot of Casey blocking this. Yeah, they jump. The, boy, they've got everybody coming here. And Casey comes out the middle, initially blocked, but they will shed that block and come right up the middle. They got to the close to the first. The first one they got close to. Uh, this one, though, they get the block. So You are right. They were close to the first one. Now you mentioned that. I remember that. So Cardinals are set up in real good field position at the 30-yard line, looking to extend their lead. Right now they've got a 14-0 lead on the, on the Redmen. Trips receivers to the left for Hayden Friend. Now the shotgun now. Rife motions across the formation. This is a throw out to Bresh. Bresh gets across the 30 down to the 28-yard line, 27-yard line. Give him four yards on first downs. Nice nice little pitch and catch out there. Yeah, and there's nothing fancy about that, but that's a tough open field tackle. Um, Holt Cutchison does a pretty good job making that tackle, like you said, but he gave up about two and a half yards in the process. So second and six now for the Cardinals. Twins receivers both sides for Hayden Friend. And now Baresh in motion. And it gives the knife up the middle. This is a nice first carry after the ankle injury. And he gets to the 26-yard line. And it looked, Chris, maybe not as explosive as he was yeah. before. Right? Yeah, as I said, it's the same play they went before. Uh, and only got one this time, but... Uh, We'll see. I mean, it's it's a cold night out there. Getting that that ankle warm back up or getting it loose, maybe <laughs> maybe a problem. But big third down for Smith Center. They gave up the block punt, and now they're they've got to hold the Cardinals here if they want to keep this score a two score ball game. But it's a give. Hayden Friend with the keeper off the right hand side. He's up close to the twenty yard line, and it's going to be close to a first down. It was a, a zone read, and yeah. Hayden Friend was taking this ball the whole time, and they are going to give him a first down. So, good boy. That's heartbreaking for Smith Center. You got him in a good down yeah. and distance, and, and you give it up on a run right up the middle. Like I said, it was a zone read. It wasn't a typical run up the middle. Caden Meitler, the senior linebacker, just couldn't, couldn't make that tackle on Friend, and Friend was able to escape and get the first down. So, first down and 10 now for the Cardinals at the 20-yard line. And whenever the Cardinals need something big, they, they've turned to friend, and he's been able to deliver. Knight's got a lot of room up the middle. Riley Knight sheds a tackle to the left, and he's up to the five-yard line. There's a flag down, but Knight is still on the ground, and and that, that ankle is bothering him. Boy, he's not – he's limping pretty heavily. Yeah, he got a gain of about 15 on that. Like you said, he doesn't look like he's doing a flag came in too. Yeah, that's holding on yeah. the Cardinals. There's a lot of room up the middle. Good – yeah, they pulled the uh, in there, look like, or, or a tackle in there to get in there. But the, where the flag was thrown, I'm thinking it was the, someone holding on the outside. And this will bring the ball back to the 21-yard line. So almost at the original line of scrimmage, they pulled that, uh, pulled the right tackle, uh, Jerome Rathbun, looks like, and Good run by Knight, but it'll it'll come back. So first down and 11 from the 21-yard line for the Cardinals. That's interesting play construction. You don't think usually of a pulling tackle coming back to the middle, but it was effective. So Tripp's receivers now, the officials are going to meet and talk a little bit. See what they've got to say. I think the Smith Center coaches were questioning whether this is still first down or not, but wow, 
looks like uh, the Plainville crowd a little uneasy yeah. about the stoppage in, <laughs> stoppage in the game. <laughs> um, glad our, our mics aren't going to pick that up. But uh, first and 11 now for Plainville. Trips receivers to the right of Hayden Friend. Again, Rife in motion. And this is a give to Nipe up the middle. Riley Nipe across the 20-yard line to the 18. Tackle on the play there. That is Dalton Kuhn, the junior defensive end. Yeah, they got pretty good splits there on that right side where they're going to run that. Or no, he cut it back to the left, I guess. But Again, that was another pull, the, an attempt pull there by the tackle, Casey. Mm-hmm. Just couldn't get, get inside. Good, good penetration by Keaton Bortz, the defensive tackle for the Redmond. So second down and nine for the Cardinals. This is Hayden Friend off the left-hand side. He's got some room across the 15 up to the 12 or 14. Oh, looks like they're going to step. He stepped out at the 14-yard line. Be a gain of about four there. Said they mentioned Rife over there. He gets a little piece of the end. They kind of doubled the end. Nip Nipe gets a piece of somebody there as well. So Colton Hutchinson forced uh, Friend out of bounds. So Third down and five now for the Cardinals. They do have a – their kicker has attempted a, four field goals on the on the year, so this is right in that range. Trips receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Hayden Friend's just going to take this. Hayden Friend, nothing to go, spins back to the right, losing yardage, and Hayden Friend is tripped up. The, the ball came loose but out of bounds. He's going to lose some yards down to – the back to the 22 yard line and that that takes him out of any field goal yeah, <laughs> range yeah. there's uh, Keaton Bortz the defensive tackle out there making the making the stop on friend so fourth down and 11 for the Cardinals at the 22 yard line yeah that was a nice play there by the Smith Center defense stopped him and he tried to it was kind of interesting how he kind of circled around <laughs> and and they were just waiting on him there that was one instance that that uh, friend just was trying to do a little bit too much. And so the Cardinals are going to take a timeout. Now 4.57 left in this first half. Plainville leading 14-0 to zero on top of Smith okay. Center. We're going to take a break here as well. You're watching the uh, Substate 2A game here at Plainville, 14 to nothing Plainville. You're watching Next Tech Game Time. Plainville Livestock Commission, First State Bank of Plainville, and Rife Welding and Construction are cheering for the Plainville Cardinals this Friday night. They hope the Cardinals go all the way. Keep up the hard work from Goslin Weed Spraying, Plainville Shortstop, and Midwest Community Bank. We are proud of you. We'll be wearing our Cardinal gear Friday night and supporting you all the way to state. We're back here at uh, Plainville where the score is 14 to 0, 457 left here in the second quarter. Plainville just took a term out, timeout. They're facing a fourth and 11 here at the Smith Center 22. Split receivers both directions for Friend looking to throw. He's got some time looking for Rife across the middle and is that caught? No. Is it... It, I don't even see the ball coming out. Incomplete. It looks like it's the call. Yeah. Well, that does the same way as me, Curtis. I, was, I, I, I didn't watch the screen that time. I watched it live. and uh, I didn't see the ball didn't see fly it. out anywhere, yeah. so good coverage on the play. Well, even watching the replay, I don't see where it hit the ground, but apparently it did. No one fussed about it. So Again, they were trying to hit Rife across the middle. So that'll be a turnover here on downs on 450 here, left in the second quarter. Smith Center now back to their traditional wishbone set. Behind Hutchinson, first and ten. And this is a give to Haven off the left-hand side and just nothing going. Boy, the, the, the success that, that Smith Center's had has been out of that, that four wide receiver set. They they really haven't been able to get much going on the ground. And Well, it, we were talking about this in the pregame. You know, they, they've got uh, Benoit that's – that's playing mostly defense now. You almost want to are going to try some gimmicky kind of thing. They may save that for the second half, but so 4:23 left in this first half. Smith Center back to the four wide receiver set. Hutchinson in the shotgun, a give to Ryan off the left hand side, and he's hitting the backfield and taken down right at the line of scrimmage. 
That is 52, Jared Casey, the middle linebacker. And, boy, Casey's Casey's been making a name for himself here in this first half with a blocked punt and, and several tackles. Yeah. He's got a pretty good pretty good nose, pretty good feeling for this game as a freshman. Yes, he does, and that's the amazing thing about it. He's just a freshman. So third down and 10 now for Smith Center, and they're, this is definitely not a position they like to be in. No. Four receivers for Hutchinson out of the shotgun. He's going to look to throw. Pumps and wants going deep, and this is high in the air, and almost picked off by Baresh. And it'll be bring up fourth down for Smith Center. Yeah, we, we, we talk about, you know, Hutchinson's put up some decent passing numbers this year. You know, not not typical of a Smith Center attack, uh, but, but still this is not the situation they want to be in. Third and ten and, and – just kind of looked like it threw it up for grabs. So fourth down and ten now for Smith Center. They'll be in their punt formation. Last time they punted, this was blocked. And looks like a different punter now. Hutchinson back to punt in a punt safe formation. And Hutchinson gets this one off. Pretty good punt. Drives Barash to the 45 and up across the 50 to the 49. So good return for Ryan Barash and the Cardinals are back in business on their side of the field. Yeah, that that wasn't a bad punt, but he didn't get a lot of air under it. It looked like so. Yeah, when uh, you got when you got everybody back trying to block, then there's not a whole lot of coverage yeah, out there. Yeah, uh, and that's the, a special teams coach has to make that decision as to what he's going to value, and and you you just can't give up those block punts. First and 10 for the Cardinals at the 49-yard line. 3.23 left in this first half. Trips receivers to the left. And motion, Rife motions across the formation for Friend. Friend's going to keep this up the middle. Hayden Friend makes a cut, and he's up to the 40-yard line. Uh, Nine yards on the quarterback uh, quarterback keeper off the zone read. Brings up second down and two. And this is just, boy, when he gets the ball, when he when he puts that foot down and, and goes forward, Chris, yeah. he's got he's got a lot of speed. Yeah, he just sure does. Wilkerson looks like he was pulling on that, too. I don't know if it was a true trap motion. Looking down the line, you couldn't see that, but you could see that guard pulling there as well. So second and two for the Cardinals. Trips receivers again to the left for Friend out of the shotgun. One, one back set behind him is Nipe, and this is a give to Nipe off the left-hand side. Nipe bounces out, and the Smith Center Redmond cover that one up. Out there, Trace Haven, the outside linebacker, along with Boy, you got to like Bortz. this when you're Smith Center, because when you want, I mean, Nipe, especially since he's got a gimpy ankle right now, you want to see him bounce. You don't yeah. want to see his pad squared up. A loss of three on the play, so third down and five for the Cardinals. And after some, after touchdowns on their first two possessions. Yeah, even that block punt, they really didn't do yeah, anything with it. So. weren't able to, to convert that turnover. Cardinals now trips receivers up top of your screen. Hayden Friend, another shotgun, taking his time. Looks a throw out there, and that is Rife, the tight end. He's got some room off to the sideline, up to the 35-yard line, 34-yard line. We'll, we'll be a first down, so... Good pitch and catch out. Again, just a yeah. just a, a a wide receiver screen pass out there. But you got a couple of guys out there in front doing a nice job stock blocking for him. You know, they've they've run that flanker screen quite a bit. Well, it's not really flanker screen. I right. call that for right. lack of better uh, terminology. But uh, uh, they they get a lot of yardage out. Nine yards and a first down. Yeah, that's the second first down they've picked up. Using that that play of some yeah, sort. Yeah, do it once to Barash and once right. to Rife. It'll be interesting now if they get it out to Copeland or Wallace one of these times. So Friend now on the zone read, pulls it off to the right hand side, and Friend gets knocked out of bounds. Looks like at the 29 yard line. Give him. Now watch him though. He rides him for quite yep. a while there before he actually pulls it. That shows you there's a really good relationship between he and Nipe. And if Nipe would, for some reason, not be able to continue, that could really be damaging to the Plainville attack. When he, uh, the uh, freshman was in, it's not his fault, but he just doesn't have right. that same relationship. 
So second and five now for Plainville, 117 left in this first half. Yeah, Finnessy, that's who it was. Looking to add on to their 14-point lead. Friend looking again for that throw. A nice tackle out there. That's Heilman, and, and yeah. that's a big hit on, on Rife. And Rife a little slow to get up. That one's, that one's going to sting. He wasn't looking for that. Yeah. Well, and, and this is twice now with it, that Smith Center has been able to come up with a big hit to, to – uh, yeah, and that was that was that was good timing because if he was a little early, they might have seen some. Well, fly. yeah, and they get, they get the pass interference yeah. on in that first drive, but uh, uh, that that will take the steam out of a passing game. Your wide receiver, those arms don't want to extend quite <laughs> yeah, as much, yeah. and so. and it's gonna hurt a couple. It's gonna hurt twice as much out here in the cold. Yeah, on a game night like tonight. Yeah, <laughs> you are exactly right. Trips left, uh, single receiver right. Third down and five for the Cardinals. And Friend looking to throw. He's got his man out there, Baresh. And Baresh to the 30 to the and up across the 30 to the 29. But that's just getting back to the line of scrimmage. And that just that, that took some time to develop. It looked like maybe Friend was looking to go deep first. Yeah. And I, I tell you, Baresh did a nice job, almost like a shortstop. Field yeah. that ball. Now, he didn't short hop it, obviously. But, I mean. You know, nice hands getting underneath the ball, and that you're right. I think he was looking for something else, and that was a second second choice. So fourth and five, and you're in that in between uh, yardage. So the the Cardinals are going to go for this fourth and five now. Twins receivers both directions for friend out of the shotgun. Twenty seven seconds left in this first half. Here comes the blitz, and friend looking to make some move. He rolls out to the right. And able to avoid one tackle, throws the ball deep, and he's got a man at the 19-yard line. And that is the frustration wow. of everybody here that in the MCL that, that faced Hayden Friend. Yes. He just keeps he just keeps these plays alive. Yes, he does. And 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 you know it, he's a, it's amazing his, his decision making there because fighting for quite a while he thought about running that, and then it was yeah. like, wait a minute. So there is a flag down though. I, I didn't see that during the play, but it looks like maybe a late flag. What? And it makes you wonder if that's a lineman downfield. Well, more something after the play. Right, could have been something after the play. Yeah, especially since it came out pretty late. That's that may be exactly what it is. So now they got all the. Here we got a replay coming up. That's good. I want kind of want to see this replay again. It, does just a great job of avoiding the tackle here, and then setting. His, he doesn't get even set his feet, and he is able to throw that out there. That's Ivan Sanders there with the great camera work out in the cold there. So, uh, Let's see what this call is, and this might be a warning on the Smith Center coaches here. Oh, okay. So everybody's a little, a little, a little, get, get little the figuring there, what Rich. this is going to happen. We don't, we don't have the ref mic'd up, and this is you're right. Yeah, illegal man downfield, and it just took a while to for that flag to come out, and so yeah, um, boy, you're spot on there, Chris, on that call. I you, it, it makes sense though. I mean, with all of that. Uh, all of friend out there scrambling around, keeping that that play alive. Yeah, but it'll be be fourth down over again here at the 35 yard line. Yeah, and they've got the yard markers. They had already moved the chain, so hopefully they know where they're. They've yeah. got them set back, so. Yeah, they should be able to find the, the marker that goes on the line and put it back there. But you're right. You don't want to ever see those sticks move. There's 12, another thing is there's only 12 seconds left in this first half. Yeah. So yeah. fourth down and eight for the Cardinals after the penalty. Twins receivers both directions. Hayden Friend looking to throw. Now he's going to scramble a little to the left. Sets up, and he's going to throw deep to Baresh. And there's a flag on the play. Uh, and Barash almost came up with that, but this, the where this was thrown at, is going to, I'm guessing it's probably going to be defensive. Well, I thought maybe Barash, well, it might be offense. I thought maybe Barash pushed, yeah, but. 
defensive pass interference. Wow. So two seconds left in this first half, and this is a pretty big play for the for both teams. And Smith Here, we'll Center get, wants to keep this. We'll get in. another look at this. And it must have happened before that. And Bresh almost makes a great catch oh, trying to come yeah. back to that ball. Nice effort. Just kind of almost gymnastic-like. So this will be the last play of the first half, barring a defensive penalty. That if Smith Center wants to stay in this ball game, they got to keep they got to keep the Cardinals out of the end zone. And, and again, you got to you got to keep your eye on Friend, man. He he can just make some make some people miss, keep plays alive in that backfield. Yeah, once again, 15 yard penalty in high school football, not a spot foul, but still plenty close enough for them to throw it into the end zone or. Or even throw a pass in front of the end zone and run it in. So trips receivers for friend to the left. He's looking to throw, bringing some pressure, and he's scrambling. Throws this into the end zone and knocked away at the last second by Heilman, yes. and that was close. Bresh was open in the back of the end zone. What a great throw by friend, but a great play by uh, David Heilman able to knock that ball well, out. Well, and what he's got to do is he's reading that receiver's hands. He never oh, looked well, back. He didn't. So. So what he has to do is when he sees the receiver's hands go up, he's got to karate chop it right at the right time, and that's a very difficult play. So that will be the final play of the first half. Our score here, Plainville 14, Smith Center nothing. You're watching Next Tap Game Time. Prairie Heritage Auction and Real Estate, New York Life Agent Justin Casey, and Rimpy Plumbing Heating and Air are proud of the hard work and dedication of the 2016 Plainville Cardinal football team. They wish them the best of luck in postseason play. Go get them, Cardinals, from Stahl Products, LLC, the Animal Hospital, Bosselman Energy, supporting the Plainville football team all season long. Coming home for the holidays is special. Seeing loved ones, spending time with family and friends makes memories that last a lifetime. And we know some can't be home for the holidays. So we're helping you make this holiday season extra special. Give the ones you love the gift that helps you stay in touch all year round. If you activate a new smartphone with Next Tech Wireless, we'll gift you free service until 2018. With Next Tech Wireless, you're never far from home. Family Health Mart, the People's State Bank, member FDIC, Fouts Insurance Agency, and Collier Abstract and Title are proud supporters of the Smith Center Redmond football team. These student athletes have shown tremendous hard work and dedication. Let's go, Redmond, from Jean's Heartland Foods, Midway Chiropractic, Smith County Bank, member FDIC, Howland Mobile Veterinary Service, and U.S. Center Motel and Apartments. We're behind you all the way. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Plainville Livestock Commission, First State Bank of Plainville, and Rife Welding and Construction are cheering for the Plainville Cardinals this Friday night. They hope the Cardinals go all the way. Keep up the hard work from Goslin Weed Spraying, Plainville Shortstop, and Midwest Community Bank. We are proud of you. We'll be wearing our Cardinal gear Friday night and supporting you all the way to state. Here in the Heartland, we make things homemade with precision and care. Robin Insurance is no different. Their family creates tailored plans to keep your family safe. They are a family-owned and operated agency that also offers commercial, farm, and crop insurance. With quick, fair claims, your matter will be held professionally and with excellent customer service. Robin Insurance, the corner post of insurance since 1936. See their ad in the Next Tech directory. Welcome back to Plainville and Next Tech Game Time's coverage of the Class 2A West Substate Contest between the Plainville Cardinals and the Smith Center Redmen. And, and Chris, uh, our score 14 to 0 at halftime. How did we get there? Yeah, we got replays of the scoring plays. Uh, the, there's some uh, nice 
it looked like Smith Center was going to blow this out, or, or I mean, not Smith Center. Uh, Plainville had two scores early in the game, uh, and we'll see those here shortly. This is a 60-yard run by uh, Hayden Friend, and what was the zone read where he made it, you know, put it in Knipe's stomach, looked to the right, and, boy, the, they just parted the zones left. And this quarterback sweep by Friend just goes to the right, gets some nice blocking out there. He's got nice blocking all night, to be honest. We've, we've talked a lot about the ends and those people doing the blocking because that's easy to see. But, you know, Curtis, I know you did a good job picking up Wilkerson and some of the other big kids that are, are throwing nice blocks to set these things up. So, um, yeah, they, uh, you know, Hayden Friend is, he's he, he's the one that makes it go for the Cardinals and two touchdown runs in this first half. He's done a little bit of everything on offense. Uh, we see Knipe get banged up a little bit with the ankle, and it'll be interesting to see. You could tell that he wasn't at full speed there oh. in that second quarter. It'll be interesting to see what coming out after halftime with, with an ankle sprain, if that's what it is, yeah. uh, you'd almost want to play more instead of this break. So. Yeah, yeah, because it might stiffen up on you and get cold. Yeah, um, it, it was an interesting second quarter as well. It's kind of a roller coaster ride. Uh, so there was a block punt in there. It looked like Plainville was going to score again, and they didn't. Uh, here at yeah. the end of the half, there's a, uh, a lineman downfield call. Then there's a pass interference call. Uh, that that last minute had all kinds of excitement, but no scoring. So that we're at 14 to zero here at halftime. Uh, tomorrow at I believe it's at uh, it's at Newton. Correct. We'll have the eight man uh, uh, playoffs or a championship game, and we're going to queue up the brackets here shortly for that. Talk about how they got there. It's, we have a Western Kansas angle to that. Obviously, we have former MCL member Osborne who will be playing in that game, and they, and they will be playing um, St. Francis. St. Francis got there by getting over Nest City. Then they beat Coldwater in that Spearville game. I watched that on open spaces. That was a wild game. Spearville had several touchdown plays called back by holding penalties. If I'm a Spearville Lancer fan, I might have been a little sore about that. Uh, but St. Francis has that wide open offense. They do, all, uh, you know, the old days where they ran the old Smith Center offense are gone, you know. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but uh, that's how St. Francis got there with some. Uh, that was a loaded West Side with oh, Spearville, yes. Central Plains, and St. Francis. Yes. All them teams Central coming Plains in. Central Plains a whale of a football team to only get that far. And then you scroll up here, Osborne Bulldogs. We've had them quite a bit in the past. They opened up by beating tra traditional power Clifton Clyde. You know, the year that Quinter won the state championship. They had a, the best game that season was their game up at Clifton Clyde. We did that one on Next Tech. I remember Jared and I did that one. Uh, the Osborne gets past the uh, Howard West Elk. Then they beat Burlingame. The Burlingame Bearcats go to Osborne and uh, – they came out in the short end there. Uh, that that should be a really good game. I'm, I'm thinking there's gonna be a whole lot of points scored in that right. game. So uh, that might, you know, they might be burning up the turf there at Fisher Field in Newton uh, tomorrow when Osborne and St. Francis meet. And there's our halftime show here being put on by the Plainville Band. But let's go ahead and let's go ahead and look at how Smith Center and Plainville got to this spot as well. We'll see some familiar names in there. In fact, we did some of these games. First of all, let's look at the top half of the bracket. Uh, tomorrow, or tonight rather, Troy and uh, Pitt Colgan are playing to see who plays the winner of this game. Um, looking at set, Troy is undefeated, so that's uh, they've obviously got some good things going up there in the far northeastern part of the state. They have wins over Blue Rapids, Lions, and Lions. Uh, they will meet Pitt Colgan, like I said, tonight. They're 8-3. and three. Uh, Pitt Colgan beat Opie. Opie's always a tough power. They're, the, Opie's one of the smallest teams usually every year in the state who plays 11-man football. They also top Washington County to get there. And here's the, uh, the western half of the bracket, the bracket we're familiar with. Plainville had big wins over Elkhart and over Belleville. Um, Smith Center had big wins over Mound Ridge and Lacrosse. We uh, we had the Lacrosse Be Plainville game uh, that decided who won that bracket. Why uh, Plainville was in that spot, yeah. but and neither team was pushed very much. In no, that game. And La Lacrosse pulled an upset there first round to took out Mead, mm -hmm. um, and but yeah, like you said, neither neither of these two teams were really tested a whole lot uh, to get to this position, but uh, uh, and. 
Plainville Instrument Center meeting for the second time this this year. Yeah, and, and, and the first time was a whale of a ball game. Uh, uh, Plainville jumped out to a 20-day lead at the end of the third quarter. Uh, Benoit, the quarterback, gets hurt for Smith Center. Um, Hutchison comes in and does a nice job rallying the team, gets them back to 20-16, to 16, but couldn't quite finish it. Uh, that was the game Smith Center had some deep possessions. They didn't come up with any points. And I'm sure they were thinking tonight, well, if, we're, if we get those deep possessions, we're going to score. And they just haven't done it yet. They've, they've kind of struggled tonight to to sustain much offense and and like I said we talked about it a little bit pregame this Plainville this edition of the Plainville Cardinals plays darn good defense too. and they, they really have tonight they have they have been the star of the show and have really shut down Smith Center's running attack Smith Center came in averaging 300 yards 305 yards per contest on the ground and they have just not getting anything going um the the Cardinals though playing playing good defense, especially up front, those defensive the defensive linemen. They're playing four four linemen, four down linemen, Justin Reif, Hayden Gillum, Willie Wilkerson, and Nolan Jones have really controlled the line of scrimmage for the Cardinals on defense. Yes, they really have. That's made a big difference tonight. The Kansas State High School Activity Association conducts official rules meetings, training clinics, and workshops throughout the state with a view towards providing a sound educational experience for all athletes. For more information on becoming an official in any sport, contact the KSHSAA at 785-273-5329. A public service message from your Kansas State High School Activity Association and Next Tech One. And that really is a serious issue. I know the Northwest Kansas League in particular is really concerned about their ability to put on ball games in the very near future because they don't have enough officials. That's yeah. It's especially true in basketball uh, you, if you go to the games out there, you'll see you see a lot of older gentlemen. You've seen officiating a long, long time, and bless their hearts for sticking it yeah, out. But right. they're, they're, a lot of those guys would like to retire. <laughs> there's just no one to replace them. So yeah. that's that's uh, that sentiment is 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 well received here. So, Chris, what are you looking here for the second half? How does how does Smith Center get back into this ball game? Boy, you you got it. And, and Smith Center, I know, does not like gimmicks. You know, they they have this. Big tradition of we, we run the wishbone, we're, we play ball control offense, but you got to wonder if they if they don't try to do some play action things. Maybe, like I said, um, you know, do you you? I have no idea if Meitler or, or Benoit are healthy enough to help them on offense. Do you try to do something different with them? You know, uh, but they they need to. They haven't had much success yet. And and but the one thing they have done. Is they like I said they only get up to those 14 points in the first quarter and they survive the second quarter. Right. It, 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 you know the stat sheet's not going to look like it's even, but the second quarter there was no points scored, so you know they held serve there. Now it's going to be a matter they got to find a way to get a score here to get a little more momentum to the offensive side. And and you can't you know you can't there's no such thing as a 14 point play, but there's a lot of time left in the game too. Yeah, and the the winds it looks like it hasn't died down and it's still blowing. So if they're going to want to throw the ball, uh, you're going to want to do it with the wind. Right, and it, and it'll be and they will have the choice of ends because Smith or uh, Plainville deferred. So they will likely take the ball. That I wouldn't think they, if the wind isn't strong enough. I wouldn't think you would no. choose wind. But uh, May Smith Center may have the wind at their back in the fourth quarter, so they may have to wait. But that that's uh, they're going to have to get something going on offense. And you're exactly right. I, I you you just can't sit back there and and, and run the ball in the middle the whole time right. and try to get back. Here, let's take a break. Here, there's about 2:40 left in halftime. Uh, you're watching. The uh, sub-state uh, 2A game here on Plainville on Next Tech Game Time. Family Health Mart, the People's State Bank, member FDIC, Fouts Insurance Agency, and Collier Abstract and Title are proud supporters of the Smith Center Redmond football team. These student athletes have shown tremendous hard work and dedication. Let's go, Redmond, from Jeans Heartland Foods, Midway Chiropractic, Smith County Bank, member FDIC, Howland Mobile Veterinary Service, and U.S. Center Motel and Apartments. We're behind you all the way. Would you go check the mail for me? I'm expecting a package.
Switch to Next Tech now to get up to $300 and the best service in the area. Prairie Heritage Auction and Real Estate, New York Life Agent Justin Casey, and Rimpy Plumbing Heating and Air are proud of the hard work and dedication of the 2016 Plainville Cardinal football team. They wish them the best of luck in postseason play. Go get them, Cardinals, from Stahl Products, LLC, the Animal Hospital, Bosselman Energy, supporting the Plainville football team all season long. When you want variety, you usually need to visit several places for bold flavors. Where they stuff your pretzel with three cheeses and roast beef, or where smoked cheddar meets crispy bacon. Because when you want to try seven new sandwiches with a range of unique flavors unlike anywhere else, there's only one place to go. It's the only place you'll find sandwiches like the Caprese and the Tuscan. And that place is Schlotzky's. Plainville Livestock Commission, First State Bank of Plainville, and Rife Welding and Construction are cheering for the Plainville Cardinals this Friday night. They hope the Cardinals go all the way. Keep up the hard work from Goslin Weed Spraying, Plainville Shortstop, and Midwest Community Bank. We are proud of you. We'll be wearing our Cardinal gear Friday night and supporting you all the way to state. Your house is more than just a house. It's a home for your family to grow. It's a place where you feel the most comfortable and can be yourself. Shop at Paul's Furniture Company in Selden so your family can select the perfect pieces for all the rooms in your house. With over 17,000 square feet of selection, they are sure to have the styles that will please everyone, even the kids. Visit Paul's Furniture Company in Selden where they'll help you feel at home. Visit us online at paulsfurnitureco.com. Coming home for the holidays is special. Seeing loved ones, spending time with family and friends makes memories that last a lifetime. And we know some can't be home for the holidays. So we're helping you make this holiday season extra special. Give the ones you love the gift that helps you stay in touch all year round. If you activate a new smartphone with Next Tech Wireless, we'll gift you free service until 2018. With Next Tech Wireless, you're never far from home. Family Health Mart, the People's State Bank, member FDIC, Fouts Insurance Agency, and Collier Abstract and Title are proud supporters of the Smith Center Redmond football team. These student athletes have shown tremendous hard work and dedication. Let's go Redmond from Jean's Heartland Foods, Midway Chiropractic, Smith County Bank, member FDIC, Howland Mobile Veterinary Service, and U.S. Center Motel and Apartments. We're behind you all the way. Welcome back to Plainville and Next Tech Game Time's coverage of the Class 2A West Substate game between the Plainville Cardinals and the Smith Center Redmen. We are getting set to kick it off here in the second half. Uh, Plainville on top, 14 to zero. Hey, we got some snaps in. Let's see. Let's go ahead and cue those suckers up. Got somebody up there in the stand. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> a lot of stocking caps. For, yeah, a lot of stocking caps tonight. I'm surprised they're able to pucker up their lips like that. I'd be cold down there if that was me. Got a wide angle of the band there. Oh, some girls up in the stands. Cheer. Oh, got the old tongue out. Don't leave that out too long. That'll stick to something. That'll be a bad. Oh, both, both tongues are out. <laughs> That's pretty cute. And we are uh, being streamed across the Internet. And throw it out to uh, Tim Otter uh, from Australia. All the way from Australia, streaming this game live. So it's literally the World Wide Web. The World Wide got... Web. The former MCL uh, wrestler up there from Norton, getting uh, getting his MCL football feel tonight, and, and we've got a pretty good game so far. Look look for this second half. So just got in my ear. By the way, we have about 600 viewers tonight. So that's a a nice turnout tonight. I'm, I imagine there's a few people locally that said, you know, might be a huge crowd. May not be much. Maybe it's hard to see, so I'll just stay at home and watch this with a warm cup of cocoa. So, uh, Hey, by the way, if you want to get your snap in, there's still time. Next Tech Game Time is partnered with Under His Wings of Plainville for the Snapchat giveaway. 
uh, N-E-X hyphen T-E-C-H with the game time geo filter for a chance to win the football fan prize pack. The winner will be announced via Snapchat in the fourth quarter. Looks like teeing it up for the Redmen. 62, and I don't see him on our, our roster here. What the information I got was Aaron Moss was the kicker. Um, may have, Aaron may just have a road jersey here. So Smith Center with the kickoff, and Baresh just falls on the ball. He's having a hard time gathering at the 20, so just falls on the ball at the 21-yard line, first and 10 for the Cardinals. They'll start this second half. Up two touchdowns on the Smith Center Redmond. Yeah, that that uh, could have been an ominous start. You, but like I said, you come out, your your hands are going to be cold. Brush is in the game all the time, so he'll warm up and get there. You know, we talked about who the a cold might affect. I think the kids that get affected most by the cold are the kids who aren't in on every down, who might be playing special teams or subbing in for a quick sit situation. So Cardinals come out, trips receivers to the left. Hayden Friend out of the shotgun. Riley Knipe in the ball game, back in the ball game as the running back. And this is a give to Knipe off the left-hand side. And not much going for the senior running back. He is taken down by number six, Trace Haven, the junior linebacker for the Redmen. And it is no gain on the play. Second down and ten. Yeah, I'll be interesting. Knipe uh, was down for a while in the first quarter with an ankle injury. Uh had, had returned. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Like I said, you, you talk about that at the end of the f- first half, Curtis, that yep. sometimes the halftime is bad when you got an ankle injury yeah. because you it gives you a chance to stiffen up. If you can keep active, kind of keeps the old joint lubricated. So trips receivers to the left. Now motion, rife in motion across the formation for friend. And friend, this is a quarterback keeper off the right-hand side, and he's tackled. Good tackle out there by the defensive tackle, Keaton Bortz. It looks like a good stop by the Redmond. It'll be a loss of a yard on the play. Third down and 11. And Smith Center's coming out here. They, they finished that first half, Chris, on, on a pretty good defensive, two two defensive stands, and, and they're mm-hmm. continuing that here in the third quarter. Yeah, you, you got to feel like that for Smith Center, they're getting some momentum on defense. Uh, and, you know, since most of these guys are, are playing both ways, that, that they've got to hope that will help. Activate, activate their offense. The trips receivers for the Cardinals. Third down and 11 for Friend. Looking to throw. And nothing there. And Friend's going to scramble to the right. Looking to throw again. And it's across the middle off the sidelines and incomplete. Or did they catch it? What was the call on the sideline? Was it a catch? No. Fourth down. Fourth down and 11. I tell you who made that play is when, when you could start to see that it was going to be a flanker screen, Colton Hutchison really fought aggressively yeah. upfield, and I think that's why Friend pulled it back down and then rotated out as he realized, well, there's nothing here because Hutchison's going to be almost in that kid's lap before he catches the ball. So 4th and 11 brings up the punt team, and Friend on the punt I'm going to angle this to the sideline, and Hutchison picks it up on the left-hand side. Hutchison's got some room. Sheds a tackle and steps out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So good return by Colton Hutchinson. And the Smith Center Redmen will start their first offensive possession on their side of the field. Ooh, nice block there. So good start for Smith Center here defensively. And they're set up in good position at the 39-yard line for their offense. Boy, they, they, haven't, they didn't get much going on offense in that first half, so... We'll see what they come out in the second half. Again, their wishbone set, Colton Hutchinson in the shotgun. Yeah, this has got to be about the best posi- field position they've had all night. And this is a give to Chase Ryan off the left-hand side, and Ryan is up close to the 35-yard line. Ryan does a nice job there. He kind of waited on the tailback to get up to the line of scrimmage and then kind of ran in behind him like an ISO. Most of the time when Ryan runs the ball, it's straight dive action because he's a fullback. But uh, gets a gain of three there. That gets something going for him. So second and seven for the Redmen. One receiver split out to the right. Three backs behind Hutchinson. This is a give to Ryan again up the middle. And Chase Ryan is to the 28-yard line, or I'm sorry, 32-yard line. 
Wrong side of the 30 there. It brings up third down and three. Yeah, this is more true dive action yep. here. And what he does there is it does a nice job keeping his legs churning. So third down and three for the Redmen at the 32-yard line. And this is more tra traditional Smith Center yep. football. Three and four yards at a time, chewing it up. Chase Ryan, the fullback behind Hutchinson. This is a give to Ryan, and he lowers his head across the 30-yard line to the 28, 29-yard line. Going to be enough for the first down. And just three yards and a cloud of dust here in the yeah. second half for the the Redmond. Yeah, well, we got the plane bill here tonight. I looked around. It didn't look like you, they received much rain locally here. So uh, we still may feel a little dust pop up there. You never know. So first down, and I think – you know, trying to trying to think back, that may be the only their third first down of this ball game. Yeah, but the the good defensive stand and good good punt return has put the Redmond in good field position at the 29 yard line now. First and 10. And you know that's the way Smith said that's just in their DNA that they're going to keep hammering away. And this is a give to Haven on the left hand side. Haven lowers his head up to the 26 yard line. Just a couple on first down. Out there making the tackle again, the middle linebacker Jared Casey. Yeah, the the uh, but you just you just feel like they're starting, and you you think a team's be having tempo. Sometimes they're running yep. no huddle things like that. But this is the kind of wet the way Smith Center has tempo. Brett Meyer split out to the right for the Redmen, three running backs behind Hutchinson, and Hutchinson is the keeper. Fakes the pitch and reaches out to the 25-yard line. Good, good, uh, good defense stringing that ball, stringing that option yes, out, and because they don't show that very often. No, uh, there wasn't any room for Hutchison, and the pitch man was even covered too. So, good defense, good sound uh, assignment defense for the Cardinals. We'll bring up third down and six. Yeah, now and, for the Redmen, and, and to get that yard, Hutchison kind of had to, you know, did that that extending the ball yep. thing, which. It's so dangerous. I, I hate to see – I mean, Hutchinson's a good quarterback, but I hate to see high school kids doing that because it's so easy to lose that. So third and six for the Redmen. And this is a give to Chase Ryan, and Chase Ryan's up across the 20-yard line to the 19. He's going to be close to the first down. Good tough run by Ryan. Boy, it's almost like he's crawling on bodies as yeah. he goes through there. I mean, that's a great effort on his part. Watch here. Yeah, it takes the initial hit and lowers his head. And gets to the 19. It's going to be close. They're going to call it fourth, or they're going to measure. It looks like they are going to measure. Um, this this is going to be close. He needed to make almost the 19 yard. That's it, 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 and it's about right there. Yeah, this is going to be close. You're right. Wow. And they're going to be short, a couple inches. Be fourth down and inches. Yeah, we just have one camera here tonight, but Ivan does a nice job of tightening that shot up there, so you can see, literally, see how close it is. So. And and they don't have, they don't run their quarterback under center, so a, just a, a traditional quarterback sneak is gonna, is, is not in their their repertoire. Right, so. right, yeah, and you fourth, don't want to suddenly do that because that's a whole different exchange. Fourth down in inches for Smith Center, three running backs behind Hutchinson. Long Cardinals down. are crowding the line of scrimmage and. This is Ryan with the carry, and he looks like he's got the ball stretched across the 19. I don't, I don't he can know. He's a very that, good spot. With that spot, I don't know if he's got it. And, and, maybe, wow. and, may, and, and maybe the Plainville line did a better job of stacking it up than I first thought, too. But it looked like Ryan kind of veered to the right yeah. right at the last second to, to get the little extra he needed, but maybe he didn't. Like you said, that wasn't. They didn't move it much. Yeah. Um, it's going to be close. Oh, wow. First down, Cardinals. What a stop there by Plainville on fourth and inches. That defensive front able to stop Chase Ryan. And, you know, that's kind of reminiscent of their first game. They, Smith Center had two drives stop on fourth down inside the red zone. Again, this one ends up uh, as a turnover on downs in the red zone. So, Boy, I, put, I got the old red ink on that one because, uh, <laughs> you know, it was literally fourth and inches. It wasn't right. very far, and it just looked like he didn't. But, you know, that's kind of the, the problem with these shotgun offenses when you need, yeah, when you need exactly a, an right. inch. You, you're not, your quarterback's not under center. So Plainville starts off 
First and ten. This is a pitch out to Baresh. Baresh makes a man miss. And across the up to the 24-yard line, there is a flag down. Yeah, they, they run that single back, but this gives you the uh, the ability to have a two-back offense. Surprised there. he didn't keep it there. Yeah. Brush did a nice job avoiding some tackles and getting some yards, but this is going to come back. I believe this will be holding on Plainville. Boy, if you're a Smith Center Redmond fan, that's got to be a little frustrating. You had you had good field position. You yes. were getting a, you're getting a couple first downs and. And to come up with nothing on that drive is well, and, and, and you think of any team around you think like you said the, the 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 shotgun snap. That's a disadvantage to that is is you can't it's hard to sneak it. Yeah, and you're starting three yards back in the yeah in the backfield. It looks like it moves the ball back to about the nine, so that'll be uh, holding. Look, it's a ten yard penalty there. That'll bring up a first and. Tw- it's it looks like it's. Tw- 20. Yeah. It'll be first and 20 for the Cardinals. Trips receivers to the right for a friend. And this is a give to Knipe off the left-hand side. Riley Knipe's got some room. Riley Knipe across the 20. Knocked down at the 24-yard line. So big run by Riley Knipe. And he's limping a little bit, but, man, he's gutting this thing out. Well, yeah, let's watch the replay. And you don't see Knipe running horizontally very often. He's usually more of a north and south runner. But uh, they did a nice job sealing that off and uh, may have been a little element of surprise there. Gets the ball up to the 27-yard line. So second and three now for Plainville. Six minutes left in this third quarter. Again, trips to the right for Hayden Friend out of the shotgun. Riley Knipe, the lone setback. And quarterback keeper for Friend. He's got some room. And cuts it off the left-hand side and gets up to the 34-yard line. 33, 34-yard line will be enough for a first down. So first and 20 ends up in a first down conversion for Plainville. Yeah, this might be something you look back as being a real turning point here in the second half. Smith Center has a nice drive that comes up on a a fourth and inches, and they just don't get it. And now, uh, even after a long penalty, uh, uh, Plainville's responded to get the first down. So four receivers set for Hayden Friend out of the shotgun. Barash in motion. This is a gift to Knipe up the middle, and not much going for Riley Knipe. Maybe gets to the 35-yard line. Give him a yard on the play. It'll be second down and nine for the Cardinals. Plainville to start this second half has really kept the ball on the ground. Yes, uh, but let's say thanks some more sponsors tonight. Collier Abstract and Title and Company, Jeans Heartland Foods, Midway Chiropractic, Smith County Bank, Howland Mobile Veterinary Service, and U.S. Center Motel and Apartments. The trips receivers for the Cardinals, and again, his own read, and Knight takes the ball at the right-hand side, makes a man miss, and is angling to the sidelines. Knight's got a good run out there across midfield to the – Looks like the 47-yard line, and again, that Chris, that's the second play that he's he's strung out to the sideline. Yeah, it looks like Wilkerson pulls out there, gets a block, helps seal it down. You got your end out there that gets a nice block as well. That's um, that was a Dylan Wallace out there. That you know, those all things all make a big difference. That's a let's see, 16, 19-yard game. That's crazy. They're running uh, Nipe wide. Yeah. Yeah, and the ankle looks a little better. So four yeah. receivers, four friend. He's going to scramble up the middle, and the flag down. Friend, there's two flags down. Friend able just to get a yard, though, up to the 46-yard line. This will seems to be called in the vicinity of a holding, but there's two flags down, so maybe the same. We do have holding on Plainville. We'll, we'll march the the Cardinals back. And again, they're going to have a first and around 20. It'll be first and 18, it looks like. Well, be, that's from that. It's well, be yeah, it's, it's back. spot foul, so it's going to be further back. Yeah. Be first and 23. So. Cardinals move back to the almost the 40-yard line, the Smith Center 40-yard line. Yeah, as I say, they're 
4.30 left in this third quarter. More sponsors tonight, uh, Prairie Heritage and Auction and Real Estate, New York Life Agent Justin Casey, Rippey's Plumbing, Heating and Air, Stall Products LLC, The Animal Hospital, and Bosselman Energy. Plainville took a timeout, want to talk this over, and this will give us a chance to throw it to a break. You're watching the Class 2A substate game between the Plainville Cardinals and the Smith Center Redmen here on Next Tech Game Time. Prairie Heritage Auction and Real Estate, New York Life Agent Justin Casey, and Rimpy Plumbing, Heating and Air are proud of the hard work and dedication of the 2016 Plainville Cardinal football team. They wish them the best of luck in postseason play. Go get them, Cardinals, from Stahl Products, LLC, the Animal Hospital, Bosselman Energy, supporting the Plainville football team all season long. We're back here at Plainville where the score is 14 to 0. Uh, I think we're going to get a snap in. Are we going to get it in that before this play or after? Okay. Okay, this is uh, brings up a first and 23 here for Plainville. They've got trips receivers to the right of friend, one setback, and now they motion across the formation with Rife. Hayden Friend looking the ball, and he's tripped up in the backfield. Nice play there. That was Chase Ryan, the 5'11", senior for the Redmond, the defensive tackle. Trips up Friend in the backfield and will get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 23 for Plainville. Yeah. If you're Plainville, you hate to call a timeout and then uh, have a run for zero yards. Uh, uh, you know, they might be setting up another play. That, that That's pretty common as well. So, second and 23 for the Cardinals. Trips receivers to the right. Friend out of the shotgun. And this is a give to Knipe again. Knipe cuts it up the middle, but nothing going for the senior running back, Riley Knipe. It'll get up to the 41-yard line. Yeah. That's Watch it. Play. Boy, Smith Center did a much better job handling the second half. See, they they're, they were pulling their right guard, and, you know, sometimes what's happened, you start reading that, and then you almost yep. got to do the, the give into the hole where they trap out of. But uh, So this is a, th a third down and 23 for the Cardinals. Here are three, only three minutes left in this third quarter. Yeah, and if you're playing, Bill, you know, you just don't turn the ball over and punt it. Give it a 14-0 lead. Looks like bringing pressure, Ryan. And Friend's going to take off and run, and he gets up across the 45 to the 46-yard line, but well short of the first down, and Plainville will be little, be forced to punt this ball away. The loop stunt there. Knipe helped pick it up, but uh, helped fresh flush Friend out of the pocket. Hayden Friend back to in punt formation for the Cardinals. Back deep is Colton Hutchinson for the Redmen. And nice high kick from Friend angles this out of bounds will be marked at the 21-yard line. That's where Smith Center will have their second offensive possession here in the second half. Here, these are all from people at home. Our next uh, flight of Snapchats. People watch you. They're, at, they're putting it up on their. Uh, it's, it's online tonight, so they're hooking it up to the computer. This is Marla from Minnesota who's. Uh, so we've had us we've had people contact us from New Zealand and now Minnesota. Who says Next Tech is in a worldwide force? <laughs> so first and ten for the Redmen. Again another wishbone set and a give to Chase Ryan and he's met at the line of scrimmage by a, a group of Cardinals. Maybe he falls forward for a one yard gain. Bring up second down and nine. And boy up the middle there's just nothing going. It's even even that last drive by Smith Center, they they were only getting three yards at at, right. at the most. But hey, yeah, we still got time to get a snap in. Someone will win the football prize package, uh, so thoughtfully put together by Aubrey. And so you, to get in, you got N E X hyphen T E C H on the game time geo filter. And that's a stop in the backfield there by Hayden Gillum the defensive tackle for the Cardinals and there's a loss of yard 
Looks like they gave him a loss of a yard. It'll be third down and 10 for Smith Center. Yeah, boy, yeah. this is, like I said, now the clock's really bleeding down. Yeah, and they're really got, late in the third. They've got the wind, yeah, but there's only a minute, a little over a minute left in this third quarter. So, and If you're going to suddenly throw the ball third and ten, it's a bad down <laughs> and distance to do that. Brett Meyer split out wide for the Redmond. Hutchison's going to take this snap. Still in the wishbone set, and Hutchison looking to throw. And he heaves this up to Meyer, but this is nowhere close. And falls incomplete. We'll bring up fourth down and ten. Yeah, it looked like that was a hitch and go. Uh, the wide receiver uh, get maybe a little post and go or something. But, uh, but there he was, was nothing going, there. And yeah. he threw it to the middle of the field, and, and it was nowhere near his receiver. It so. looked like it was just a uh, one-man route out there, too. There yeah. wasn't, there wasn't yeah. anybody else. So that's pretty tough to complete. And the... Redmond could not. Brings up fourth down. Hutchinson in to punt. Again, their punt safe formation. And pretty good punt. Barash takes it at the 50. Cuts up field and gets too close to the 45-yard line. Good coverage. That, that was a low, low punt. Very returnable. Yeah, they're fortunate. Uh, yeah. The Smith Center is fortunate that wouldn't return further because, like you said, low punt, easy, easy to return. But the 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. And uh, – if you're the Redman, you you got to get a stop here, and and get, and you know this is an offense. Sometimes it takes time yep. for it to score. Uh, they showed a little bit of progress there early in the third quarter. They had a drive where they did move it down to the uh, Plainville 19. They had good field position to start with. They started at the 39, but they were yep. stopped on literally fourth and inches. So, so Plain, Plainville ball at the Smith Center 46, first and 10. Good good field position to start for the Cardinals. Tris receivers to the right of Friend, and now Rife again in, in motion across the formation. And this will give the Nipe up the middle, and Nipe across the 45 down to the 44, 43-yard line. Good good three-yard run on first down for the senior running back. Yeah, let's watch here. We'll see. Uh, they, they pulled their left tackle again there to get an extra blocker in there. They, they do some creative things that make that, that one back offense more of a power, spread them out offense than you would think it would. So 20 seconds left here in this third quarter. Plainville still on top, 14-0. to The last two quarters, we haven't any score in the second quarter, and, and unless this play scores for Plainville, we're going to have two quarters scoreless. And Friend with the sweep off the left-hand side avoids a tackle, but... It was Heilman there to, to wrap him up at the 45-yard line. And this will, will be a third down play to start this fourth quarter. But uh, after three, our score here, Plainville 14, Smith Center 0. You're watching the Class 2A Substate game on Next Tech Game Time. Family Health Mart, the People's State Bank, member FDIC, Fouts Insurance Agency, and Collier Abstract and Title are proud supporters of the Smith Center Redmond football team. These student athletes have shown tremendous hard work and dedication. Let's go, Redmond, from Jean's Heartland Foods, Midway Chiropractic, Smith County Bank, member FDIC, Howland Mobile Veterinary Service, and U.S. Center Motel and Apartments. We're behind you all the way. Plainville Livestock Commission, First State Bank of Plainville, and Rife Welding and Construction are cheering for the Plainville Cardinals this Friday night. They hope the Cardinals go all the way. Keep up the hard work from Goslin Weed Spraying, Plainville Shortstop, and Midwest Community Bank. We are proud of you. We'll be wearing our Cardinal gear Friday night and supporting you all the way to state. Welcome back to Plainville to start of the fourth quarter here in the Sud State game between Plainville Cardinals and the Smith Center Redmond. Our score, Plainville 14, Smith Center 0. There's a big down for the Redmond, third down and end nine. And it's a quarterback keeper by Friend, and he's knocked down by, looks like, number 45. That's Avery Hawkins, the middle linebacker. Trips Hayden Friend up for just a one-yard gain. So fourth down and eight for the Cardinals. With the 14-point lead, Chris, this is you got to punt this ball away, try to pin Smith Center back, and boy, 
Smith Center hasn't got much much of anything going on in offense. No. So. No. Plainville pretty confident in their defense, I would think. Yeah, they're, they've got they've got them spread out here on this punt formation. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, Another guy coming in late. Yeah, they got him lined up as a flanker. That's interesting. And a couple steps by Yeah, he has friend. more of a rugby punt there. And this one's going to – oh, it well, takes a nice boy, roll for boy, the that Cardinals. that was a fortuitous roll. <laughs> the, the, the ball tiptoed down the sidelines down to well the 15-yard line. A good roll on the punt for – the Cardinals, if you're a uh, Redmond fan, that's uh, an unfortunate role now that you got your offense backed up at the 15-yard line. And I don't know what you're going to do, Chris, here. you got 11 minutes left in this ball game. You need two scores, and they just really haven't got going on offense. Well, you, they, they've been in these situations before, and they have a lot of faith in, the, in their scheme. But you got to think that they're going to play action or do some things. And, and like that one-man route, that's hard to make that work. So now twins receivers to the left, one receiver to the right. Hutchison with the fake and off to the side. A nice open field tackle there by – that's number 10, Jared Copeland. Makes a nice tackle on Hutchinson yeah, for a get another no game. shot at Copeland making this play here. Yeah, he fakes the pass, stands up, and Copeland, that's good form tackle there. Good double leg takedown if yeah, you're a wrestler. You so, second down and 10 for the Redmen. Again, out of their three receiver set is a throw. And boy, he had a man open out there, but uh, that was uh, Thane Benoit, the backup quarterback. The, the other, the Avery Hawkins was open. The tight end was open. but Yeah, the, something wasn't right with that pattern because you usually don't want two guys in the same spot like that. So third and ten for the Redmen, and this is a big down for Smith Center. Plainville fans are making some noise here. Rolling out to the right. Hutchison with the throw to Heilman. It's broken up. Broken up. By the strong safety, Noah Hansen, it looks like. And so that will be fourth down and ten for the Redmen, and they're going to punt. Yeah, and, you know, some say, why don't you go for it? You just you can't go for it deep no. when you're in. There's still a lot of time, 10.37 left. You know, could be a fake punt here, but, but you know, Plainville's looking for that too. So um, Hutchison's going – the quarterback is the punter. He's back in punt formation. They're in their tight – Punt safe formation. They've already had one one punt block tonight. Hutchison with this okay. punt gets this, and this is a short one. Bounces at the 35 and only rolls to the 40 yard line. So Plainville is going to set up pretty good field position at the or at their own 40 or at the Smith Center 40 yard line. So here we're going to get some snaps up here in just a minute. But before we do that, let me remind you the thrill. Of, oh, where the snaps are right here. Let's look. Somebody watching there on their television. They hooked up their computer there. All six of these are for people watching at home. So that's pretty cool. People taking their computer, hooking it up to their TV screen. Because we're all online tonight. Got some little guys there watching. Got some great shots. From Holcomb. There, Holcomb, there you go. <laughs> and this is a give to Nipe. And Nipe is cut down at the line of scrimmage at the 40. And there's a flag down. Could be. That was only a 25-yard pump, by the way, for Hutchinson. Could be, a, yeah, illegal shift on the Cardinals. We'll move them back. They're deciding whether to take. They're going to decline this, which is not bad because now it'll bring up second down and 11. That was a loss of a yard on the carry. So second and 11 for Plainville. Would rather take the the yard loss instead of the down. I mean, so that. Not, pretty good decision. I tell you, another good decision that was made by the Next Tech Muckety Mucks. Uh, we have 767 people viewing tonight. I'm not sure if that's a record. I don't know if we have that back at the Next Tech main office. But uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. Uh, uh, for, it's been a been a good goal, but good ball game. So trips receivers up top to the left of Friend, and this is a uh, zone read. Friend with the keeper to the 40 yard line up close maybe to the 39 but again not much going for friend on the zone read and yeah. they've, they've really played Chris they've they've played a lot better they've they've read that um, they're keying on friend friend really hurt them that first half with two touchdown runs and they're really keying on him 
this second half. Yes. Yeah. Like I said, you, you, the, the Smith Center defense has really played a whale of a uh, – well, even the second quarter they yeah. played did a good job. It was just that bad start. But uh, third and nine. Third and nine for the Cardinals. They got trips receivers to the right. Friend's going to roll that way. And he's under pressure by Haven and throws the ball deep. And it's out of bounds. Just throwing that ball away. Oh, interesting cam- cam- camera shot there. He looked like he <laughs> almost disappeared there beyond, beyond the, the little uh, hump there. But Good decision, though, by a friend. Just nobody open. He's going to just throw this one out of bounds. Fourth and nine now for the Cardinals. At their 40-yard line. See if they're going to punt this and pin them deep. You, your defense is playing pretty good for Plainville. Yeah. I would I would try to pin these the Redmen back, and that looks like that's what Coach Stevens is going to do. And remember last time, Friend kind of rugby punted. He ran a couple yards. So, you know, Smith Center's kind of crowding the line of scrimmage a little bit. They don't go for it, though. And this punt by Friend is going to go out of bounds. Looks maybe at the 23-yard line. That's where Smith Center is going to have the ball, first and 10. Only nine minutes left in this sub-state contest. So getting down to the wire, we've, we've had a pretty good ball game so far. Uh, two scores there in the first quarter and nothing since. Yeah, two ugly punts here just recently. But uh, anyhow, the thrill of a touchdown, the excitement of a successful pass, all combined to remind us that state championship football games are only moments away. Sponsored by the Kansas State High School Activities Association, state championship playoff games began November 1 and will continue with the final games on November 26. So first and 10 now for the Redmen. Four receivers split both directions for Hutchinson. Hutchinson looking to throw and across the middle and behind the receiver, Meyer, and they're going to call that incomplete. So that that pass by Hutchinson just behind the uh, junior wide receiver, Brett Meyer. Yeah, it just they went to more. That was more of a pistol formation there, um, but you know Smith Center's about got to do this to get something to happen. The other good thing for Smith Center is it stops the clock. Twins receivers, and this is a give to Chase Ryan, and he's got some room off the left hand side, and Ryan up across the thirty to the thirty two yard line will bring up third down and uh, three for the Redmen. Let's they, watch this again. Yeah, he kind of bends it around there. That's a nice little run there to – you sometimes get, might get the pursuit going left and then bend it back to right, I guess. Ooh, illegal block against the Redmen. So there was a, a flag on the play. That was on the sideline. Couldn't couldn't see that, but we'll push the Redmen back, Be push them deeper in the hole, second down and – Looks like 20 now at wow. the 15 yard line, and they're, you know, Chris, their offense really is not not designed to get to pick up these these long these long conversions, but they're going to have to if they want to advance to the state finals. Well, and, game. and you know, you get eight yards there, that gives you some momentum, and you just yep. lost it again. So pistol set again to Chase Ryan with the with the carry off the right hand side, and he's taken down. Looks. Looks like Hayden Gillum on the tackle. Only yeah, very a decisively of, bringing him down there, yeah. Only a couple yards on the carry. Yeah, Gil- yeah, Gillum had a little bit of a head of steam there, so. Uh... Second down, and, or third down and 16 for the Redmen. Looking to throw. This is a B- Benoit, the backup quarterback. Looked like maybe it was going to be a double pass, but the Cardinals were there to sniff that one out, and. Make the tackle at the 20-yard line. That's Riley Knipe on the tackle, and that was looked like Chris. That was going to be a double pass. Yeah, but and you know we kind of Copeland out there as well. Yeah, that that might be coming, and uh, Plainville very wary of that type of development. So fourth down and 15 for the Redmen. They are in punt formation. One one receiver is split out out wide to the right. Hutchinson back. And we'll punt this one off. Pretty good punt. Takes a bounce at the 45 and rolls to midfield. So the 741 left in this in this ball game. Plainville's going to have the ball, and they're up 14 to zero. And after after that first that first quarter of scoring, we we've been deadlocked, Chris. The the next two two plus quarters. You know, it's been a really fun year this year, bringing you football, but. 
this is this is more typical of eleven man football. More yep. field position. We're going to take care of the football. You know, if we've done some eight man games this year, or geez, it was just a <laughs> track meet. Wham, 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 wham. So, uh, um, and you know, that's what I expect to happen tomorrow when St. Francis and Osborne play. I expect a track meet down there at Newton. Um, I in the 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 Division two game. Dighton throws the ball really well, and I understand Hanover does too, so that'll be interesting to see how that one turns out as well. The first down and 10 for the Cardinals. Going to keep this ball on the ground, and Knipe off the left-hand side, not much going, and he's hitting the backfield there by David Heilman. Loss of a couple yards on the play, but keeps that clock running down. Yeah, he, you saw he, he kept that ball in there a long time, tried to write, but you can also see where Knipe – He's not really an outside runner anyhow, but you can see that gimpy ankle. He really didn't want to try to plant on that. Yeah. And, and and probably the most important thing if you're the Plainville Cardinals, you know, you lost three yards, but you know what? Protect the football. Yep. Keep keep a hold of that football. Make that clock run. That clock is your friend at this point. Uh, you got seven minutes left before you punch your ticket to the state finals. Twins receivers both directions for a friend. He's taking his time, milking that clock. Friend with the fake. He's going to take the ball to the left-hand side. Friend's got some room. Cuts up field across the 50 to the 45-yard line. Hayden Friend on a 10-yard run. and Boy, he's just so quick, Chris. When he gets oh, out in yeah. that open field, he can just make, make people miss. Yeah, that's what I say. He made a guy miss right there at the line of scrimmage. That made all the difference in the world there. Like I said, now rather than a third and ten, you got a third and five, which is a very makeable situation. So, clock's still running. We're down to 6.15 left in this ball game. Hayden Friend going to bring the Cardinal offense to the line of scrimmage. Twins receivers set both directions. Going to wait to the, to get the signal. Friend looking to, th- looking to throw. He can't find anything off the left-hand side. Going to switch directions to the right. Makes a man miss. Leans across almost to the 40-yard line. He's going to be close to the sticks here. It's going to be close to a first down. Hayden Friend with a nice effort to to get that ball extended out, and this is going to be close to a first down. You know, if if, if Hayden Friend were wearing a pedometer one of these nights, he's got to be racking up a bunch of yardage because this is the first yep. time he's went one way and then went <laughs> to the other. So, but what what an effort though to to get that extend that ball out, and uh, Trace Haven had him two or three yards back behind where where he was able to get the ball. And friend able to extend it out and may have picked this first down up, and he did. Boy, he did. That is big for the the Cardinals. Now they got at least four more downs to run run some clock off. Boy, you are right about that being big. That uh, uh, you know, 5:52 left in the game. There's still time for Smith Center to get two touchdowns. But boy, that you can feel the blood running out of the Redmond right now. So trips receivers to the left. Hayden Friend's going to take his time with this snap. <coughs> let that clock run down a little bit more. The crowd kind of can sense that they're they're close. They're close to the state finals uh, berth for the Cardinals. Yeah, they'll play the winner of Troy and Pitt Colgan. And Friend now with the keeper across the 40. He's going to stay in bounds and... Gets back to the line of scrimmage at the 40-yard line. So hey, we, no got some, game. we got some more snaps coming up here. They're from all, that one's from Topeka. We have got the worldwide coverage tonight. There's car, some Cardinal fans. There's the one from Topeka. They got that old Capitol Dome in there. <laughs> and this one's from Hayes. The Little Apple from Manhattan. Cool. Overland Park. Wow. We've got nice coverage here in Kansas. I've got a lazy daughter in Quinter's supposed to be getting one in here too, so maybe we'll get with them from the West as well. So second down and ten for the Cardinals. Four fifty four left in this ball game. Hayden Friend has has ran for two touchdowns. Now the throw out there, a nice tackle oh, by nice play. Colton Hutchinson able to to run through a, a block of Barash and, and make a tackle on Rife. Yeah, that's a like you said. He run, he's going to run through, and and this is the kind of play that Plainville 
wide receivers usually do make that block on, and then that time a determined effort by Hutchison to make the to stop that. So and that's the second big hit Rife has taken on one of those those slip passes out to the flat. So third down and twelve now for Plainville. They are they are taking their time, letting the clock run down. They're in no hurry. Yeah, that's that's a nice job by the Cardinals, and now it looks like there's a timeout. And it will be Plainville on the timeout. So exactly four minutes left in this ball game, and and Chris, if you if you're Smith Center, you need a stop here. But but what do you do if you get the stop? What do you do on offense? Well, uh, they, they, you've, well you've you know you you've seen several of your plays that are stopped. Come back with a complimentary play to that's been stopped. Come back with a complimentary play that maybe you can get them over, you know, to flow yeah. too hard, too much pursuit. And we, I don't think we've seen any uh, counters from Smith there. And that's something that they're usually uh, is in their playbook and, and can make a spring for a big, a big gain is those counters. You get everybody flowing off that, that right. wishbone, off that veer, and, and you hit them with a counter the other direction. I, we haven't seen that tonight. Yeah, and, and, you know, well, people say, well, why don't you throw the ball? Well, obviously, Plainville is, is sitting back in some pretty deep coverage yeah. that even if you complete the pass, you're probably going to get tackled right away. So that's why some type of misdirection might be your best bet to spring something long. But Plainville's got, got the ball here, third down and 12. They have been in control of this ball game from the start. Uh, two two touchdown runs in the first quarter by the quarterback Hayden Friend uh, have, have gave them that lead, and they've they've hung on, played good field position since then. Friend back to throw. He is going to throw. It's going to be picked off, picked off by the middle linebacker Avery Hawkins, and Hawkins takes this ball up across the 40 to the 44 yard line, and now Smith Center's in. They're in business here right, with right. 352 left and, in this game. And, and that that's, and this isn't terribly costly to play, but what it does, it gives the Redmen hope. You know, and, that, that, yeah, and it gets that, them out of their end zone. They played this whole yes, second half yes. in the shadows of their goalposts. So Plainville's played a great field position game this second half, but that's a that's a momentum changer for the Redmen. Now let's see if they can capitalize. Four receivers for Smith Center. Hutchinson then out of the shotgun. Looking to throw. This is an out and up, and he's going to give it to Hawkins, and Hawkins just oh. had that hit him right in the hands, and so he couldn't hang on. So they'll bring up second down and 10 for Smith Center. Boy, that would have been a big catch for Smith Center because you had all that momentum after yep. the interception. Um, and it wasn't going to be a huge gainer, but they need momentum. Like you said, they, they need a screwy misdirection play or something. So twins receivers each direction for the Redmen. Hutchison out of the shotgun. We're going to roll to the right. Looking to throw across his body. And this one's intercepted. Plainville with a big interception. This is Hayden Gillum on the pick for the Cardinals. Wow. <laughs> so Here we got the replay coming here. Hayden Gillum, he does a little bit of everything for them on defense. So why not get an interception? He's just kind of reading the quarterback. Drops back in coverage and... Reads his eyes. That was a, a risky throw by Hutchison. Rolling out to the right, trying to throw across his body to the middle of the field. Hayden Gillum flowed that way, read the quarterback, and good play Yeah, and like you said, that's, that, you know, you could say that's not a real fundamentally sound play, and that's true. But at this point in the game, got they just have to take risk. And, and unfortunately for the Redmen, that risk turned out poorly. The ball at the Plainville, 47. So short-lived momentum for the Redmen now. Plainville with the ball, and, and Friend's going to keep it off to the left-hand side, able to stay in bounds. Yeah, he I'm lost glad, some yards, but I, I'm glad you noticed that, Curtis. He's done that a couple times now, yep. get close to the out of bounds and kind of give himself up. Yeah, so he the tackle out there by uh, looks like Hawkins with the tackle bring up second down and 13 at the. 44 yard line, 320 left in this ball game. Plainville now in in control. Going to try to run this clock off. So twin receivers, both directions for friend. And this is to give the Knipe off the left hand side. Knipe bounces it out, breaks a tackle. Knipe's got some room. Knipe up across the 50, knocked out of bounds at the 45 yard line. That. 
will be close to a first down. Yeah, but it you, does stop the clock. We've had Plainville a couple times this year, and I never, I do not recall Nye Parley ever running east and west so much. You know, he's pretty much a north-south yeah. guy, and um, well, it's that, been fairly effective for him. You can't, yeah. you can't knock it. That play was designed to go, to go in the interior of the line. And I, though, bounced that out, showing a little bit of the, of, of some speed. So third down and three for the Cardinals. Trips receivers to the left. A friend's going to keep this, and he is tackling the backfield. There's a fumble, a tackle by Keaton Bortz, the defensive tackle, and they are going to say it was a fumble. The fumble, the ball recovered by the Cardinals back at the 48-yard line. So friend here uh, kind of getting – a little careless with that ball, the interception, right. and now a fumble, though. I was just saying, I thought that fortunate. might be a little bit of the zone read, but it really wasn't. He no. had put the ball back away. So, Fourth down and nine, and Hayden Friend in the punt formation. And we'll punt this ball away. Hutchison's going to take it off a couple bounces at the 15. And nice tackle there in the back. It looks like at the at the 15-yard line. Justin Reif with a nice shoelace tackle on Hutchinson. Breaks down and gets gets the ankle of him for no gain. And Smith Center now 208 left in the ball game, and they are 85 yards away from their first score. They yeah, have their first score. That's a good point. <laughs> they, they, you know, they, that was a nice play by Reif there that – Hutchinson, you know, he kind of he waited to pick it up. I thought maybe he waited long, but but maybe he was just letting things kind of set yeah. up for a return. Maybe they had a wall over there. I couldn't tell. But uh, if he gets over that sideline, he's got a lot better chance of getting it up the field. So four receivers for Hutchinson. Now the shotgun looking to throw. He's got Hawkins out in the flat. Hawkins makes the catch up across the 22, the 23-yard line. Gain of seven on first down. That may be Hutchinson's first completion of the night. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Um, they get back it's up just, on the line of scrimmage, run another quick play here. Hutchinson going to roll to the right, going to fake that way, going to go deep, and he's looking for Meyer. Meyer, oh, he had the ball right through his hands. Brett Meyer makes a nice adjustment to that ball. The ball was a little underthrown, but Meyer unable to hang on to that and falls incomplete will bring up third down and one. Yeah, I don't know if they – it looked like they must have been in true man there because the D-back never turned around yeah. to find the ball. So uh, – and like I said, you know, you say, gosh, why didn't you catch it? Like you said, that is hard to adjust your route to come back for that ball. Just 139 left in this ball game. Smith Center down two scores. And there's a flag down. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike, Ooh. and that looks like that may be on the Smith Center sideline. That was dropped by that far official, and that's what I'm guessing that's probably happened. Yeah, that's going to be half the distance to the goal line. I didn't see anything. <clears throat> none, none of the players on the field seemed like they were doing anything. And no. so Takes it back to the 10 well, he didn't mark it back. That's that, 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 that half the distance function. So now this will be third down and 12 for the Redmen. 139 left in this ball game. Four receivers set. This is a reverse to Benoit looking to throw. Slips up. up to, it might be up to the line of scrimmage. He throws the ball and it goes incomplete. Benoit, though, was the original starting quarterback for the, the Redmen. So... We know he can throw, but that ball that that ball falls incomplete. So fourth down and twelve for Smith Center, and boy, the Plainville crowd is on their feet. They can sense this. They are just a minute and a half away from punching their ticket to the state finals. Yep, Were that they... that next that uh, that'll be next Saturday, and that'll be in Hayes, I believe. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. So they just need one more stop, and it'll the game will be theirs. So. Fourth down and 12. Hutchinson back to throw. And he's going to throw a deep one across the middle. He's got a man. Heilman, and nice play out there by Noah Hansen. He got just a fingertip on that ball. And, and Heilman unable to bring it in. And that's a turnover on downs. And 
Plainville is going to take over first and 10 at the 12-yard line, but just a couple kneel downs, and, and Plainville is going to seal this one. And this will be their first state final. Did you have that when the, when the last state final yes, appearance was? Yes, I did. It was. Um, was it their state championship? Yes, it was their state championship team, which I think was 85, yes. So the, the folks here in Plainville have waited a long time to get back to the state finals, and they're going to get a chance to next week. They will take on the winner of Troy and Pitt Colgan. I didn't, I, we haven't been able to get a score yeah. for you on that one, but 124 left. And Friend's going to take this, and he's hit hard out there by Avery Hawkins. And Friend on the quarterback keeper, kind of surprised they just didn't take a knee, Chris. Yes, yes. That was a hard hit. I don't think you want to be risking those types of hits, that, you know, with a minute left in this ball game. But, but Plainville, though, they they're – their dream season is gonna gonna continue. Their only loss on the year was to Phillipsburg. Phillipsburg was the champion of the MCL League, a tough MCL league. Smith Center is gonna see their their season come to an end here. The second year in a row, they're gonna lose the state semifinal game. And now you can see some of the emotion from the Plainville players. Yeah, I could hear you can kind of hear the stands rumbling in our in our mics too. Uh, it's kind of cool stuff. So this was a this was a a defensive battle, but uh, Plainville able to come up with a couple scores early in that first quarter, and their defense held serve the rest of the rest of the game, shutting out the Smith Center Redmen. And I don't Smith Center, you know, their their offense averaging over 300 yards per game. They didn't get anywhere near that. It was a, a dominant performance by the Cardinal defense. Their offense did did enough. We were able to put two scores on the board, and and Plainville is going to come out of here with a 14 to zero win. They're going to back into the state finals since 1985. So, okay, we just got the score uh, from our producer director uh, Jason Pearson. Troy beat Pick Holgan 28 to zero tonight. So, Plainville, you will be playing Troy next week in your 2A state championship game. And that'll be a great game. Plainville with one loss on the year. Troy with no losses on the year. Um, but, boy, Chris, what what a game here tonight. Um, not not a high-scoring game. Yeah. More of a defensive. And we knew that was what it's going to be. These are two MCL teams. They're physical. They're, uh, they're just hard-nosed teams. And, the Cardinal defense just coming up. Big That's tonight. a great point. I was going to say, you know, as I was reflecting back on this, you know, uh, I think Coach Stevens has been known for bringing a lot of great offensive concepts to Plainville. But this all about tonight was about the Plainville defense. Yes. Much more so. And that defensive front of Justin Reif, Hayden Gillum, Willie Wilkerson, and Nolan Jones just, just controlled the line of scrimmage. Yes, they did. I hear we got some more snaps up. We're going to have to notify a winner here soon. Let's see the snaps. That's another person watching on TV. Is that? Uh, that's why I thought it said Austin, Texas, East Memphis. from East Memphis. How cool! That's the Minnesota one, and that's from Ellis. That's cool. Kansas City. Wow. People met from Salina. People met in their own filters. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and there's another, another one from Memphis, Memphis one. Hey, you, as I said, we, we've been we've covered a lot of the United States, and Smith Center has one on there as well. So. Uh, from Leota, Kansas. There you go. I tell you what, we like I said we, uh, and this is our play, winner, Cardinal Brian Eichmann. That you are a winner, so you will get our fantastic uh, prize package tonight. Thank you, thank you, all of you who have sent your snaps in tonight. It's it's been a uh, been a, a lot of fun. Like I said, we got a lot of clicks tonight. We appreciate everyone tuning in from from New Zealand, from Minnesota. From Leota, from uh, Kansas City, everyone that's tuned in tonight. Uh, I tell you what, let's take a break here, and we'll, we'll kind of reset here and see what we want to do next. Uh, you're watching the Game of the Week here on Next Tech Game Time. Prairie Heritage Auction and Real Estate, New York Life Agent Justin Casey, and Rimpy Plumbing, Heating, and Air 
are proud of the hard work and dedication of the 2016 Plainville Cardinal football team. They wish them the best of luck in postseason play. Go get them, Cardinals, from Stahl Products, LLC, the Animal Hospital, Bosselman Energy, supporting the Plainville football team all season long. Plainville Livestock Commission, First State Bank of Plainville, and Rife Welding and Construction are cheering for the Plainville Cardinals this Friday night. They hope the Cardinals go all the way. Keep up the hard work from Goslin Weed Spraying, Plainville Shortstop, and Midwest Community Bank. We are proud of you. We'll be wearing our Cardinal gear Friday night and supporting you all the way to state. Family Health Mart, the People's State Bank, member FDIC, Fouts Insurance Agency, and Collier Abstract and Title are proud supporters of the Smith Center Redmond football team. These student athletes have shown tremendous hard work and dedication. Let's go Redmond from Jeans Heartland Foods, Midway Chiropractic, Smith County Bank, member FDIC, Howland Mobile Veterinary Service, and U.S. Center Motel and Apartments. We're behind you all the way. We're back here at Plainville, where Plainville has punched its ticket to the state championship game with a 14-0 win over Smith Center. Um, Curtis, you want to give us a few other yep. scores from tonight? We got uh, in Class 6A, Blue Valley on top of Shawnee Mission East, 27-19. Derby on top of Lawrence Free State, 35-14. In Class 5A, Mill Valley in the second quarter is beating St. Thomas Aquinas, 14-7. Goddard big over Great Bend, 43-14. to That's a fourth-quarter score. In Class 4A-1, uh, Bashore Linwood, uh, 0. Bishop Miege, 52. That's a final. Uh, the other semifinal, Bueller, uh, will advance to the state finals with a 27-7 win over Mays South. In Class 4A Division Two. Topeka Hayden, 20. Holton, 8. That's a final. And in the fourth quarter, Pratt hanging on to a 21-14 lead over Holcomb. In 3A, Rossville, late in the fourth quarter, is on top of Nemaha Central, 27-22. And a final, Heston ends the, the dream season for Hoisington. Heston wins 35-19. And then our, our game here, 14-0 Plainville in the other semifinal Troy beating St. Mary's Colgan 28 to 0. Here, I'll give a scoring summary here in just a minute. We want to thank some of our sponsors tonight. First of all, our Snapchat uh, sponsor was uh, Under His Wings of Plainville. We thank them for sponsoring that tonight. It was really a lot of fun to see so many chat snaps from all over the United States. And of course, Curtis. Uh, uh, was we communicated with his friend that's in Australia. That was a special treat as well. Some of our sponsors tonight were Collier Abstract and Title and Company, Jeans Heartland Foods, Midway Chiropractic, Smith County Bank, Howland Mo Mobile Veterinary Service, U.S. Center Motel and Apartments, Plainville Livestock Commission, First State Bank of Plainville, Rife Welding and Construction, Plainville Shortstop, Midwest Community Bank, Family Health Mart, People's Bank, member FDIC, and Fouts Insurance. And I'll get our other sponsor in just a minute. Let me give you a quick wrap-up of the scoring. And not a whole lot tonight. Yeah, <laughs> not a whole lot. Like I said, this, uh, and it all happened in the first quarter. Uh, so I can kind of summarize this fairly quickly. Uh, on the first possession, uh, Smith Center picked up one first down. They didn't have many first downs no. tonight either. This was not a typical Redmond night offensively. They punt. Bresh uh, downs the ball at the Plainville 38. Knipe runs the ball three yards up the middle. And on the next play, Friend on a zone read stuck it in Knipe's gut, held it there for a minute, and the seas parted on the left side between the left guard and left tackle over there. And I remember you talking about it was Casey and Wilkerson. Parted, friend darted 60 yards up the left sideline for the score. Uh, the Copeland PAT was good, and with 7:56 left in the first quarter, our score was seven to zero. On Smith Center's next possession, they were able to get one first down, and then had to punt. Zabel punted the ball to the to the Plainville 15. So nice field position for the uh, nice field position game for Smith Center. 
Uh, but uh, the Cardinals respond by just pounding out a long, hard drive. Tim plays 85 yards, and, and there was a lot of strange things happened in there. Uh, Knipe gets carries the ball 31 yards, gets it over midfield to the uh, Smith Center 38 yard line, but hurts his ankle. Finnessy comes in, uh, he loses five yards on his first carry, but then Friend gets nine yards on a sweep. Uh, there's a pass interference penalty that gives uh, Plainville 15 more yards. Uh, Bresh gets the ball from Friend on a screen pass. Goes 12 yards and get three more yards on a face mask where his helmet was literally ripped off. Friend kept the ball up the middle on a zone read for three yards and then went on a quarterback sweep for one yard. Copa makes the PAT, which made the score 14 to nothing with 141 left in the first period. Little we know, that was going to be it. <laughs> that was going to be it. The defense t- took over from that point of the ball game. Yes. Uh, one more. I got a few more sponsors here. Prairie, Her- Prairie Heritage Auction and Real Estate. New York Life Agent Justin Casey, Rimpy's Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Stall Products, LLC, The Animal Hospital, and Bosselman Energy. Uh, we got the crowds all out on the field, kind of cherishing the moment here. And this is those kind of moments you really want to remember. You forget how cold it was if you are a <laughs> Smith Center fan. Or, I mean, if you're a Plainville fan, if you're a Smith Center fan, you may say, gosh, it was cold out there. <laughs> Uh, let's take a quick break here so we can re-rack and wrap this baby up. But uh, our final here, 14 to nothing. Uh, let's take a break, and then we'll come back and finish up tonight's broadcast. You're watching the Game of the Week on Next Tech Game Time. Prairie Heritage Auction and Real Estate, New York Life Agent Justin Casey, and Rimpy Plumbing, Heating, and Air are proud of the hard work and dedication of the 2016 Plainville Cardinal football team. They wish them the best of luck in postseason play. Go get them, Cardinals, from Stahl Products, LLC, the Animal Hospital, Bosselman Energy, supporting the Plainville football team all season long. Plainville Livestock Commission, First State Bank of Plainville, and Rife Welding and Construction are cheering for the Plainville Cardinals this Friday night. They hope the Cardinals go all the way. Keep up the hard work from Goslin Weed Spraying, Plainville Shortstop, and Midwest Community Bank. We are proud of you. We'll be wearing our Cardinal gear Friday night and supporting you all the way to state. Family Health Mart, the People's State Bank, member FDIC, Fouts Insurance Agency, and Collier Abstract and Title are proud supporters of the Smith Center Redmond football team. These student athletes have shown tremendous hard work and dedication. Let's go, Redmond, from Jean's Heartland Foods, Midway Chiropractic, Smith County Bank, member FDIC, Howland Mobile Veterinary Service, and U.S. Center Motel and Apartments. We're behind you all the way. Welcome back to Plainville and Next Tech Game Time's coverage of the Class 2A sub-state contest between the Plainville Cardinals and the Smith Center Redmen. Our final score here from Plainville, the Cardinals are victorious over the Redmen, 14-0. And, and Chris, after after two scores in the first quarter, both defenses took over this ball game. And it, it was about field position and defense from there on out. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh... Fairly, it's a fairly physical game, you know, in, in this in this type of weather condi- conditions, that makes it all the more challenging. But uh, both teams really rose the occasion. Smith Center had its moments, but just wasn't able to put together uh, that sustaining that drive and getting the score in. Yeah, they really never could string first downs together. I don't, I don't recall either back-to-back first downs all night for the the Redmen, and that's really a uh, the tip of the cap to the Cardinal defense. They yes. they are they were the stars of tonight. Even though they they've got a lot of stars on offense with a friend and Nipe and Barash, it was it was the defensive side of things that that won them this ball game and got them in the state finals. Yes, sir. So uh, we want to thank. Uh, like you said, we had over 700 people tune in tonight online. We weren't. This was a game that was just online. It wasn't on TV. We want to thank everybody for tuning in online tonight to watch. We want to. Thank Ivan for being out there and freezing to death filming this. And thank Aubrey and um, and Jason down in the truck for putting this all together. Um, 
And, and yes, and they did just remind us how warm they are down there. It's not too bad up here in the press box, actually. But, <laughs> but uh, we'd like to thank you all for tuning in tonight. And this is probably our final broadcast year. for. So thank you for tuning in with us all year. You've been watching the Game of the Week here on Next Tech Game Time. <laughs>